Ethan did really good in the last debate of his that I saw, and I heard that he did well here. Two, so the only thing that I know going into this, the only thing that I know is uh, this Pearly Things person. So Just Pearly Things has a big YouTube channel, over a million subs. Uh, she basically does like red pill content from a female perspective. She's kind of a loser and kind of stupid. I've seen her defend pedophilia seen her pal around with Nick Fuentes. The basic gist of her, as far as I can tell, is that she's desperately trying to carve out and maintain a niche in the misogyny market on YouTube, despite being a, you'll forgive me for being rude, unimpressive looking woman. Yeah, I'm not just saying that to be mean, but generally speaking, in order to succeed in like the like misogyny online circuit, you either have to be a metrosexual guy who's repressing his homosexuality, or you have to be a gorgeous model who's reading off misogyny from a note card before getting paid by male producers. You understand what I'm talking about? In, in, a, in, in her manner of maintaining a unique, distinct niche in this space is by uh, performatively hating herself in a way that is obviously disingenuous and done for attention. So she's been posting nonstop on Twitter about how women shouldn't be able to get divorced, uh, you know, like women should be totally subservient. If your husband is abusing you, just talk with him and ask him to stop nicely. Uh, that kind of crap. You know, I don't think she actually believes any of this. Like, uh, most people in her position, I think that she's probably a massive degenerate who, uh, a lot of nobodies and does a lot of coke when she gets the chance to. Uh, you know, a lot of people who LARP this, like, trad wife thing absolutely don't live the lifestyle. I do think she's authentically retarded. I'm not taking that away from her. I'm not saying she's not that. I, I, I'm, I'm listening. I'm, I'm, I'm listening. I'm hearing you. I'm hearing this story. Uh, but I do think that a lot of this is just, like, the misogyny grift. How do you get a bunch of, like, super, super misogynistic 14-year-old boys to listen to a girl who doesn't look like a model? You have to entertain them uh, with performative self-debasement, right? I think it's a strategy. Clearly it's worked out. She's got more subs than I do, so. All right. But I kind of want to just intro introduce you. You've become really successful the past year or two. Kind of, uh, you're, you're friends with Fresh and Fit, right? Those, those guys are your dogs, so to mm -hmm. speak. Uh, and you kind of are sympathetic to their kind of views. But mm -hmm. you've made a name for yourself just, um, on TikTok and on YouTube. So mm -hmm. let me just ask you generally, like, what kind of messages are you sharing on your platform? What kind of important messages is it that you find yourself are about? Um, I believe in family. So I think that we should have policies that push family. Um, I think that feminism overall was a bad thing. I think um, that we should be... I think women are happier um, when we have, you know, a family and kids over a career in the long run. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. It's okay. Little, yeah, little I understand. Nervous. So it's more like yeah, traditional. You 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 want people to kind of follow more a more traditional path in terms of mm -hmm. family and gender and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, and you just see the negative um, like outcomes that society have when like families fall apart, right? And it's especially hard on the children. Like you see, you know, um, you know, more you're more the kids are more likely to go to to prison. They're more likely to drop out of school. They're more likely. Um, to, you know, be in mental health institutions. So you just see like all of the problems that come with, you know, single mother home. So I just think it's important that we push policies that push family. So how do you push a policy that promotes family? Like in what way can you force a family to stay together or encourage it uh, in a sense? Um, well, I think you, you first have to get rid of incentives that incentivize like women to leave families. So um, like, you know, um, women women don't leave the families usually it's the men who do <laughs> that's it's usually the other way for example child support alimony i'm not really a fan of those child support so if a, mm -hmm. so if a um if there's a divorce let's oh, say actually, the, i think we should ban divorce too yeah i think that should be banned yes okay well that's a little bit silly you have to acknowledge that right no so, so. See, so again, she doesn't believe. So to be clear, again, she doesn't believe the stuff that she's saying. I hope that's clear. She's not even smart enough to affect the rhetorical and tonal techniques that you would use to like make it seem as though you're being sincere. So her her content is entirely structured around like 
uh, it's because this is all like red pill or men's rights or misogyny stuff on YouTube, like fresh, fresh and fit. It's like cards, bitter, divorced men, and lots and lots of young boys who are terrified of women. Now, obviously, she doesn't have to live by her grift or anything. She can go like do lines off of like a Puerto Rican guy's cock every night at the club if you if she wants to. But like it, it's it's uh, you know she she has to put this up for the um for the community, which is why she smiled like that at the end, too. She's like assembling all the cards, right? These are all the positions you'll have to trudge through to have a conversation with me. Banning divorce means that when you decide to get married, you are, n you are not allowed by the government to leave your significant other in any situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just think that if you want to leave, you just shouldn't get married. So that's just my opinion. Right, but like in the that is not how time works. You would only want to leave after getting married because time moves forward, not backward. Real world, that kind of simplistic. And, and you know, there's there's like exceptions to this, but I would just say in general, for most cases, you know, we could talk about exceptions, but like the rule. Well, the divorce... exceptions are the important part because I've heard you say that a lot when you're talking about things. You say, "Oh, you want to talk about exceptions," but the exceptions is the important part because those are the people that are that are going to be affected. I mean, exceptions are going to be a large part of, of uh, divorces, as you say. I mean, you're talking about, like, you know, 25% maybe or more. Because mm -hmm. if you're saying you're not allowed to get divorced, so we're talking about, like, what if the relationship is physically abusive? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think if it's physically... See, the, this is the problem, though. All right. If it's <laughs> one-sided physically abusive, okay. Fine. Divorce. We, we can allow divorce for those exceptions. But, okay. like... I, Okay. All right. Walking that one back pretty quickly. We even talk to people that work at like abuse centers and they say that the majority of abuse is mutual. So it's not just one side's hitting the hitting the other. It's like mutual. So surely that is not true. That that is a misinterpretation of um of uh, of of like of like a I don't even know if it's like a, a, a I don't even know if it's like a study or if it's just like a bit of common knowledge. The thing is that in in relationships that are abusive there is mutual abuse, but that does not mean that it's a both sides thing. So if one person, if like the husband is beating the shit out of the wife and the wife like, like tr tries to flee and like throws something at the guy, then technically the abuse is mutual. Throwing something at your partner is abuse in the context of this thing. But that doesn't mean that it's a mutual in the sense of like both parties are responsible. Um, yeah, it doesn't speak to proportion. That's not every goal, time. I think, yeah, I know. I but it's not healthier everything. either. Mm -hmm. I just think that the goal should be to keep families together and that the goal should be to work through it. I, you know, I think most people agree with that, right? Because I think we all can look at the stats and say family mm -hmm. is important, right? Family is important. Nuclear families is important to like the health of, of children growing up in general. I think we can all say that. But when you say something like divorce should be illegal, yeah, we got to kind of suss that out because that's a pretty... Uh, extreme claim. For example, um, in 2014, family mm -hmm. violence was the cause of 25% of divorces. So I don't think it's fair to characterize that as some kind of like super fringe example of why people get divorced. Well, but you also have to look at there's incentive structures in place where there's a lot of false accusations in family court. <laughs> Um, like, and a lot of people don't know this, that family court is actually based off, it's not based off of evidence, it's based off a of balance of probabilities. And there are incentive programs that you get, um, like in the UK, you get a free lawyer if you accuse your husband of abuse. And it's less than 10% of cases are actually like followed through with with the police. Um, in the United States, you get a free lawyer no matter what. I don't know much about the British system, but uh, we, 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 we get public counsel. Sorry, I, I don't want to move on quite yet. I want to stick on the topic of not... Well, not for civil family court? Oh, I thought they meant for, um, for like, the, um, for, like, abuse cases, like, charges. Oh, no, for civil court? No, you do not get a free lawyer here. Allowing people to divorce. So you're saying that you do want to allow people to divorce. Then you don't really believe that. No. I would say ban, ban divorce. Oh, because you just said mm -hmm. you would allow an exception in the case of abuse. I said one-sided abuse exception, sure. Okay, so how do you prove the one, so then you don't believe in forced divorce? Or I mean, I mean you, uh, I, okay, a banned fine, divorce. Fine, divorce. Fine. Yeah. Banned divorce except for one-sided abuse. Okay, sure. except for one-sided abuse. And is there going to be a system to kind of, uh, how do you prove that 
that uh, the woman or man. Well, was I, on the, I think yeah, I think you have that. to you have to press charges in criminal court, not family court. So only if your significant other is tried criminally are you allowed to leave the relationship. Yes. Tried and found guilty criminally. Yes. Yes. Otherwise, you know, just stick out of, you know, which is fine if you don't. The funny thing is this is actually a pretty anti-male perspective because if you are a husband and you are getting physically abused by a, a wife, it is almost impossible to get the cops to take you seriously. You can file for divorce in civil court, but the idea of like you getting hit by your wife and then like calling the cops and them being like, oh, she's the like no shot, bro. So, so like funnily enough, this is actually like in the opposite yeah, it's actually bad for men more than anything. Well, you know, want to be with someone forever, but I just say stay stay out of marriage. Right, you know, but... because when you say marriage is supposed to be, you know, for better or for worse and sickness and in health and for richer or for poorer, it's not supposed to be, you know, when I feel like leaving. And the majority of divorces nowadays, it's just, you know, when the girl just feels like leaving. That's not true. So, and, yeah. and well, you it's know, just not true. I've, talked to, I've talked to hundreds of women. That's on not the, uh, the, the classic. I've talked to many people uh, data summary where right? I'm familiar with this one. Just, so, that, that doesn't prove anything. And, and, and even if you look at if you look at uh, when no fault with divorce was <laughs> initiated in the 80 in 1970, I think it was initiated. I mean, one of one of the number one reasons was financial differences and irreconcilable difference. Irreconcilable. And yeah, and reckless. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, good talk. So, um, but so so but yeah, I just think like you know. For the people that don't believe in real marriage, because what what is marriage if, if you can get divorced over damn near anything? It's not marriage anymore. It's something else. So, so uh, if you know anything about history, no fault divorce has kind of always been an option because what people what couples who didn't care for each other would do uh, as long as the lack of care was mutual is they would just find the fault. So like you would have instances where if they wanted to like separate, but they couldn't just go to a court and have the separation done because there's no fault. So the guy would just like bring home a prostitute, get caught by his wife, and then like, wow, now there's a fault, you know? Um, the, the, it's just a basic fact of the matter. You can't have a state contract force two people to live together and be friends for their entire life. That's insane. Does anyone else think it's psychotic and like kind of infantile that that's even considered like a reasonable position to hold? Oh, you signed a contract, so now the state is going to force you two to live together for- What are you fuck? What, what, what the fuck are you talking about? That's insane! If you want to, sure, but like, Jesus. The the whole in sickness or in health thing is just a flourish of ceremony. The document that you sign when you get married does not say that it's an interminable, unbreakable contract. Well, I think the reason for that, historically, this uh, emphasis on staying married, right? Or even before this uh, no-fault divorce was uh, an option, and it was more difficult for women to get divorced, or men, the... Uh, abuse of power and the risk for abuse and for people to get stuck in a horrible relationship situation, mm -hmm. not just for them, but their kids, right? I mean, obviously you have seeing, having your kids watch their mother get beat up mm -hmm. and, and oftentimes it's going to bleed. Or, or the kids get watching their father get beat up. Like it goes both ways. I, yeah. And I, I acknowledge that it goes both ways. So both people have a, a right to, in my opinion, get divorced because the alternative is one of the partners being stuck and like, do you, do, you think that's majority, lethal, uh, do, you think, do you think that's the majority of cases? A majority of cases of what? Divorce? Of divorce. 25%. Do you think the is 25 what? It's 25% based on statistics. No, that, but that's not, no, that's not what's um, in criminal court. It's like less than, less than 10% um, it actually followed through in criminal court. Well, so regardless, 10% is enough, don't you think? No, I said less than 10% of the abuse cases of the 25%. So that's like... Journal of Family Violence in 2014 found that approximately 25% of divorces in the United States involve domestic violence. Right, but again, that's because the woman says that she was because they're incentive. Okay, but but program. you're just saying stuff. You're just saying stuff. You don't actually know that to be true. <laughs> no. The, what what Ethan did right there is actually a very effective rhetorical technique. By the way, if the person you're talking to is just saying stuff, you can say that. That's that's it's actually good to do that. That's an important. That's a powerful strategy. As a matter of fact. Oh, I do. How? I do like okay. In the UK, there's a law that you get a free lawyer if um. You how does that, sorry, but how does that prove that women are lying about violence? No, get... because I, I'm saying that you can't, okay, you can't prove it unless they go to criminal court because criminal court is based off of evidence where, where family court is based off of a balance of probability. So it means it's more likely that they did it than didn't do it. It's not innocent until proven guilty. Right, but they're not those going are, to jail. Those are both evidence. That, those are just different evidentiary standards. That's, but that, it's still, that's still evidence.
jail. It's just to let this the abused. Uh, I mean, you could partner. call it jail when you have a lifetime of not seeing your children. When the you whole could, like, but it's community. Not. I mean, you you could. I mean, have you spoken to these men? Whoa, hold on. If if the circumstances of your divorce prevent the husband from ever even seeing the children, then that husband had to do something wrong. That is not a normal divorce. See, notice how like the narrative she's trying to construct is like, yeah, the woman lies about the violence, even though she was probably the one doing it. And like, uh, uh, the, the, that he's kept from ever seeing his kids. Bro, if, if that's the circumstance, like you must have done a pretty terrible job putting your case forward to the family court. If you can't even see your kids. It's like literally their whole community thinks they're an abuser. Now they, they get to see their kids maybe three days a month if they're lucky. Um, a lot of sure, them are yeah, on, uh, sure, a lot of, of course. Them are on, yeah, right. there's there's bad outcomes for sure, but or on the a, whole, I mean, a, lot of, a lot of men, a lot of men zero themselves out during this. They what? Um, like a lot of men commit suicide oh, during. I see. Yeah. Oh, that's horrible. You know, that, I, it's horrible. It's like absolutely terrible. Like I interview these men that are going through this. Um, yeah, I'm sure that's I, happened. But at the same time, you're saying women are lying about violence, and I haven't seen you be. No, able okay. To prove I'm that. saying I'm saying that. That you can't prove it unless you go to criminal court because family right, but court it's not is a crime. based off of evidence. Right, but they're not going to it's jail. Not, it's just about the was, welfare of the kids, and you know, I mean, the people. It's involved. a crime if you're if you're falsely accusing someone of abuse. Um. And so I'm saying I'm saying there's no, you can't notice how the accusation that a person is falsely accusing somebody is something that she does not believe there should be a criminal evidentiary standard for. So the default assumption is lying until proven otherwise. The legal assumption is that there is no statement of truth on a legal claim until it is, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, found to be in a civil court, you know, uh, the higher preponderance evidence or true beyond a reasonable doubt. But even if you accuse a person of abuse in criminal court and then uh, don't get a conviction, that doesn't mean that legally you're found to have lied. It just means that they weren't convicted on that charge. Um, but the the assumption for her is that the woman is lying. They only prove it in less than 10% of cases. Okay. In criminal so, court, because criminal court is based off of evidence. Family court is not. It is. So let's just say less than 10%. I'll just give you the benefit of the doubt on that. Still seems like mm -hmm. enough to give people the option to leave. And this idea that women just leave whenever they want seems a little bit infantile since because people change, right? Especially when people get married young, which does happen. People change. People mm -hmm. uh, go through shit. People grow apart. But, a but lot of the men, a lot of the men who end up being abusive, you hear, are, were one way before they got married and one way after you get married. So mm -hmm. I don't think it's fair to say uh, you're just leaving whenever you want, or or you should just have to stay in this forever. Wouldn't you prefer people get married than never get married? Like, I feel like you would be disturbed if, like, only mm -hmm. you know five percent of couples. Oh, here's a nice stat that you can cite whenever this comes up in the future. By the way, uh, ninety one percent of child custody agreements after divorce are decided with no interference from the family court system. So in more than nine times out of 10, um, whatever arrangement is made with regards to who gets the kids or in what way, it's agreed between the divorcing parents without the state intervening. Couples ever got married? Mm -hmm. um, I'd rather people got married and stayed married. Right, but that wasn't one of the options. Um, I, I actually don't see a point in getting married with the way that marriage is today, to be honest. Okay. Um, yeah, because again, notice how she jumps between points, uh, as, as well here, by the way, it's, um, divorce should be banned. Oh, but except for this case, um, I just think people should stay married, but actually I don't think people should get married. So there's no, like, again, it's just a mishmash of male insecurity talking points, uh, jumbled together. And like, what is it? The average marriage is like eight years. So the average marriage is, is eight years and you're done. That's not marriage. Um, leaving a marriage due to domestic violence and not pursuing criminal charges. If so, mm -hmm. let's say that a woman's in a marriage mm -hmm. and they have a no, no fault marriage mm -hmm. uh, divorce. So let's say she doesn't want to charge her husband. She just wants mm -hmm. to leave amicably. Okay. But in your situation, she's forced to charge him legally to have a police investigation Good charge point. him for domestic violence. Wouldn't that be more d damaging to his reputation? Not if he beat the case, because again, it's based off of evidence. But I mean, I think that... Why oh yeah, that's, that's great for a guy to have to go to. A knowingly fraudulent uh, criminal accusation of physical assault. But you can just beat the case, Lamau. She's creating an... He, Ethan's right. 
she's suggesting an incentive structure that would increase the number of false accusations because it would be the only way to get out of the marriage. Do you want an abusive guy walking free? If he's actually abusive, he should go to jail. Um, shouldn't, right. shouldn't we agree on that? Right, but it's just not that simple, again, because, like, this is, it's just not that simple, abuse cases, because, you know, and it's not that simple to, to convict people. I just, I just don't think that men should be punished without evidence, and I think in family they're, court, they're not. it's not based off of evidence, it's based on a balance of probabilities, and so you have a case where... This whole family court is biased against men thing is just not, it's just, it's not true. It's an old talking point, it's not, like, it's, it's just not true. Men only, like, they're stuck seeing their kids, like, three days a month. <laughs> When, again, it's not based off of evidence. Like, you know, I've interviewed guys where literally the, the wife, um, and, I, and I've seen the court documents. Uh, it's coming out in my documentary that's coming out in the fall. Um, but the wife um, was plotting to try to get the guy to hit her. Right. I'm sure that happens. But and, you know that. And, that's, and, that's, they, that, and the that, wife still got custody. Right. Mm -hmm. But that, that, that's not a representative case, again. I mean, for example... Mm -hmm. You ask why um, a mom wouldn't want to try a parent. It's more nuanced, right? I mean, you need a more you need a more uh, developed take on that because it's very traumatic mm -hmm. for the kids and the family to put their father through a violence mm -hmm. case, and especially when the kids are probably going to have to ask to testify to talk to the police. I mean, I, I totally understand why a mother or father wouldn't want to put their family through that, don't you? I mean, I can understand it. Yeah, sure, mm -hmm. sure. And I mean, according to National Dis Statistics on Domestic Violence. Okay. There's 10 million men and women each year that are the victim of physical mm -hmm. abuse. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. But in your world, I have a feeling that a lot of these people would be trapped in these marriages. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. I, I said in one-sided abuse, they could leave. Yes. Okay. So, no. yeah. okay. Wouldn't, wouldn't you want them to leave even more if it's two-sided abuse? I don't even get that prerequisite. Like, oh... If the husband's beating the wife, then okay, she should leave. But if they're both beating each other, then they have to stay? I don't understand that. Um, do you I, do think, I do think in order... No, yeah, because then it's like a they deserve each other thing, right? Like, yeah, like, oh, uh, well, they're both bad, so they both deserve it. To get custody of your kids, if you're going to accuse the other side of abuse, you should have to prove it. Do you think... What, what do you think is more harmful to kids? Uh, divorce or physical abuse? <sighs> Physical abuse. Okay, you passed that one. Mm -hmm. But you had to think about it for a second. But anyway, let's move on from this. No, I just, I just thought it was kind of a silly question. That was all. But okay, that's refreshing. Um, t tell me, what does red pill mean to you? Because I've heard you use that phrase a lot. You're part of the red pill community. Yeah, I mean. <sighs> It's a lot of people. I will say a lot of people have their own definitions of it. So people use it for different things. But I would say it's viewing the world the way it's supposed to be or like ah. the way it is, not the way you're told it is. So um, like, you know, for example, a lot of guys think if they treat a girl nice and give her flowers that, you know, she'll essentially sleep with him. And then a lot of guys find out that's not true. And so then they, you know, came together and yeah, realize that. So that's just one thing. Is that true? Do people do went? That's not like the blue pilled feminist take, though. That's like the um, that's like the nice guy gamer take. The like, oh, if you're just nice to a girl, she'll sleep with you thing. That's not like you're not. If if you reject that, you're not rejecting like the the feminism blue pill or whatever. I don't know. It's this is it, this all gets so mixed up. The funny thing is, is that if you ever want to, if you ever want to see like the highest level of like Giga Chad, sexually provocative people who are just you know f and rotten however they want, it's gay people. You know, for all the accusations that gay people are all blue-haired wokelets who like can't handle the realities of sexual engagement, the most sexually successful red pill MGTOW motherfuckers are getting dwarfed in body count by these like West Hollywood Giga Chads um, who are bumping abs together. Uh, 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 in the clubs every night, you know? And they're certainly forward. I would know. I've been to those clubs. They're very forward. <laughs> but, get, hey, guys, straight guys, I'm giving you permission to be a bit of an asshole here. If you ever want to feel good about yourself, dress up nice and go to a gay bar, okay? They're going to be very nice to you. Men really believe that? That, what do you mean? That if you buy flowers and be nice, she'll sleep with you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think that's real. I think that's like a really odd way to describe dating. It's just like men are nice guys and women well, are hurt. It, it just seems very cartoonish. Say, like we're talking I, I about real world yeah. stuff and it's just you can't I mean, really... I just think men don't really... 
men don't expect like women to reproduce more with felons than non-felons. Like, I think that's a surprise. What? Okay, we're, do we're doing like the race baiting thing here. It, 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 this is this is the um, the funny thing is is that she's like rejecting the nice guy logic while also um, substantiating it. She's literally doing the like um, the nice guy doesn't get the girl, the bad guy does thing. Literally, like the thug gets the gets to knock up the girl, while the nice dude doesn't get laid. She she's embracing the logic that she claims to be rejecting. Women reproduce more with felons. Mm -hmm. Violent felons. felons. Yeah. I mean, like, think whoa, about whoa, it. Like, Ted wait, Bundy, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, yeah, what does that, what does that mean? So, so, so the obvious answer for this is that violent felons, uh, 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 uh there is a self-selection bias here, where the kinds of people who would go after violent felons are probably from lower socioeconomic strata and also are probably um, less careful when it comes to family planning. And as a product of that, this group of people are more likely to have children. This does not mean that people find violent felons more attractive. It means that violent felons tend to be concentrated in social strata where it is more likely that they will be able to father children with less planning or care. So it's it, this is kind of like a selection bias thing. You know what I mean? Felons who are mm -hmm. procreating have more kids in general than non-felons? What does that stat mean? They have more children with felons than non. It's like so, so, I don't remember if it's they? violent felons versus nonviolent felons, but I just remember violent felons have more children than nonviolent felons. And so there's men who are looking at that and they're pissed. So here's another thing. So this. So here's a way to instantly blow this argument out of the water. Like all red pill types, um, just pearly things has to say that like women like power and money. Then why is it that poor men reproduce more than wealthy men? Oh. Oh, whoa, whoa. So, so women actually like it when you're broke because it's the broke dudes are laying chicks up all over the place, right? Well, no, any individual woman is probably going to prefer the guy that she's with have money rather than not have money. But the kinds of places where people are of a lower socioeconomic strata are just more likely to have worse family planning. Exact same thing. <laughs> no, not because I've never heard surprised. that stat in my life. No, I think, I think just surprised. Right. Because, I've never you know, heard that stat. Oh. Okay. Yeah, is there a source for that? It just seems kind of an odd stat. Like, what does it prove? Classic data felons analysis. Have mistake. more kids <laughs> than well, non felons. Well, I think the reason the reasoning is because women want a guy that can, um, like, protect her, basically. A felon? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. That's why a weird. Ted Bundy, why do you think Ted Bundy had like love letters? Oh, well, that's a whole different weird phenomenon about women being uh, interested. No, Some weird... That, well, yeah, that's completely separate. That's 100% separate. Uh, women were writing love letters to Ted Bundy because women are insane. That has nothing to do with the whole violent felon thing. A niche no, of but women that's involved, the point. All, all that's, serial the point. that's surprising. Right, it is surprising, right. but I don't think it's any interesting commentary on the dating scene that, that serial killers get love mm. letters from f from freaks you know what i mean richard Rainier. also guys do the same thing remember that one female um murderer the one who looks like a mouse with the big glasses every time her photo gets posted guys are all doing the humana humana thing um people just find danger attractive for the same reason that people find like dude people just find danger attractive people have always done this go look at like any media property where there's like badass action chicks who are like you know, on the edge or whatever. Like this is like this is this is not like a woman thing. This is just people are like this. Um, yeah. As, as for why we're like this, I don't know, but it's like pretty much an everybody thing, you know. Yeah, or like the whole yandere trope in anime. Well, Did too. I, All serial killers do. Mm -hmm. so yeah, but the point is, it's, it's one like it's not the same for women. It's just men. So what is your point exactly that, uh, that, what does that prove that felons have more kids than non-felons? Um, you know, that a lot of times women pick the bad boys, you know, I mean, that's pretty much it. Cringe, yeah. Reddit, tip, tip, tip. See, reject the Reddit logic, but also embrace it. F soy, hold on, I'm so sorry, one second, it's time. Oh my God, I've been waiting for an excuse. Sucks to live in a world where nice guys finish last. He's right, you know. Yeah! We're not gonna get pushed around. Yeah! Especially not by girls when we're just trying to be nice. Yeah! It's about time we take a stand. So I say, let's get down to business and consume 
the soy. Brush the stasis off now. Aramori boy. All these women never treat me right. And they haven't got a clue. Because I am a predator too. Sucks. <laughs> All right. Good interlude, folks. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I was having more kids with I mean a guy that's a violent felon you don't think okay <laughs> is there a source for that it's just a really weird stat I'm just trying to grapple with it I can get it I can get it in sure. a second yeah that'd be great I mean we we can try to look for it too I just want to hear what's it's in I can show you where I found it okay in this. fantastic uh. mm. yeah Casey Anthony got love letters apparently so she was a she was a serial killer, right? Oh, she killed her daughter. Not That's, serial, just just a one time. So, so Casey Anthony murdered her daughter, and she was getting love letters too. She got letters proposing marriage. Don't you find that surprising? Yeah, yeah, that is surprising. So in a sense, it's not. It goes both ways, kind of when you look at it holistically. Um. Oh, I've I've mostly been like ribbing with the the topic. I just want to say, so far, I think Ethan has been doing a phenomenal job controlling the pace of the discussion. He does a really good job of like coming across as level-headed and um and 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 reasonable and like the whole you know like i'm considering your points and i've found flaws kind of thing which is, is I, th I think generally a very good approach to take yeah no i think it's more so for women pick violent men more than men pick violent women there are more violent that. men to pick um i think you can just um, I would just say, I would Advice. guess, I would guess that it's more common with women because of that study versus like a fringe case. I would be surprised if women got the same amount of letters, but you know, I could be, could be You wrong. might be surprised, but do you feel that sometimes you argue from emotion rather than like concrete She's facts? a woman, like, yeah. You talk about, and I've, I've watched a lot of your videos, you mm -hmm. say stuff that I don't think has much of a backing in reality. It's based on feelings, maybe instead of, not emotions, but feelings. You say, I feel this to be true. Do you feel you do that a lot or no? Um, I try, I would say I am a woman, so sometimes, yeah. Ah! Okay. Interesting but, defense. You know, hold on. Do you want me to find it or no? Sure, yeah, You. I'll, I'll give you a minute. That's totally fine. Mm. Uh, but, uh, okay. So why should I engage with in a, in a conversation with you at all if you're if women are just emotional? Shouldn't I be talking to a man about this? This is how, this is how I feel with like the women who do the trad wife content, which is like if if I took your advice, then I shouldn't take your advice. No, like re like I think that's like an actual argument. You could do the same thing with race for like um um Jesse Lee Peterson types, right? Like. I, because I feel like within his worldview, I, you could literally go like, "Well, I'm white, so shouldn't I just listen to me?" You know, um, and they can't really overcome that because they're arguing from a position of ideological inferiority. Probably. Why do you bother to even have a platform? Shouldn't you just concede to a man? <laughs> yeah, probably. You right. know. So we got to look for a man to replace you. <sighs> Don't you think? Um, no, not. You not really. You don't think, okay. But you do think women are more I, emotional. I, okay, I, I gotta find... Hold okay, on. Go ahead, I'll give you a minute. Sorry, I won't... Okay, the, sorry. I'm trying to, like, talk to you and find it at the same time. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a minute there. But it's it's fine, too. We can move on. If I'll give you a minute, okay. but we can we don't have to get stuck on it. Okay. Mm. It's I mean, we can... It's fine. We can move on. Oh, you just... Okay. Well. Here. Rolo stream. Rolo seems like a nice guy. Where? Chat. Zoom chat, yeah. Uh, Seven months ago. Yeah. Thank you. Faith. Present feelings as facts. Um, do you? I don't even remember. You said something like, do you think you shouldn't have a platform or like. Well, right. Yeah. Well, I asked and you said, uh, well, I'm a woman. Of course I'm going to. I asked you, do you feel that you make arguments based on feeling? And you said, yes, I do, because I'm a woman. Oh, yeah. I was, I was kidding. Um, no, I use. No, I use facts to back up my arguments. Um, sometimes I'd say I'm wrong. Um, sometimes I think something and it's not correct. But I would say most of my opinions, I try to at least have a basis of fact. Yes. Okay. Some things, I mean, some things you just see in reality, right? I mean, like, some things sometimes you just you're going to, 
yeah, I mean, you know, you can like some things you just learn from interviewing hundreds of people, you see patterns. Right. But sometimes when you interview people, you interviewing specific people with specific experiences, you're obviously going to run into a bias. Um, no, I don't think so. Cause we do street interviews all the time too. So that's like random people on the street. Okay, fair enough. So what? So there's the red pilled, which are people who see the world for what it is, mm -hmm. and then you have blue pilled people, which I'm assuming is someone like me. I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put words in your mouth. But uh, mm -hmm. what does blue pilled mean? Um, people that see the world for how they like like it to be, I guess. Okay. But I don't. I don't talk about much about. I guess like blue pill, but yeah. Okay, fair enough. We don't. We don't have to focus in on that. She's not particularly charismatic, is she? So. I've noticed that one of the primary focuses of your content is kind of the problems facing men and how there's so much unfair uh, societal pressures or norms or expectations on men. Um, why is it that you're so singularly focused on the troubles of men? Um, why am I focused on the troubles of men? I mean, that's an interesting way to, I guess, phrase my content. Um, I, I would say I I think it's unfortunate what happens to men in divorce court. So okay. that's probably what I talk about the most is that's, I think that men yeah, should have access yeah. to their children. So again, this this talking point is complete bullshit. The whole the divorce court thing being biased against men, it's just not true. Women get the kids more often than the guys do because they agree to it. The husband and wife, former husband and wife, look at each other and they're like, Yeah, okay, yeah, let's let the mom take care of the kids. Because a lot of people are under the impression that women are naturally better caretakers. So, like, there's a bias towards that from a patriarchal perspective as well. It is just, it's just, it's not difficult for men. Also, I just, it's, it's a little rich considering the fact that, like, the argument that people like Just Pearly Things is making are that women should just be stay-at-home wives, meaning that they should be completely economically and socially dependent on their husbands. So, like... She, through the, the fake argument that divorce is rough on men, well, it's rough on everyone, but it's, it's like biased against men. And to correct this, we need to create a system in which women are completely dependent on men in every way, you know? That's not so. what you talk about the most. Uh, you mm -hmm. definitely talk about stuff like pay gap myth. You talk about mm -hmm. men want younger girls. You talk about men are just doing what's in their nature. You talk about women who have higher body count are less desirable. Mm -hmm. I haven't, I'll be honest, I've talked, I've watched a lot of your stuff and the vast majority is not about divorce court. It's about this kind of like dating coach stuff. No, I, I wouldn't say I'm a dating coach, but okay. No, but that realm, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I don't mean you're a dating coach, but like that kind of realm, mm -hmm. it seems that you're mm -hmm. super focused on. Mm -hmm. So what is your interest in that? Manosphere, maybe that's a better term, manosphere stuff. Um, what is my interest? I don't know. I just thought it was interesting. So that's okay. what we talk about. Okay. Jesus that's Christ. Fair. Um, has she is she tired? Is she sleepy? Is she like FD signifier? Or is, is, is it nappy time? So what is you say your anti feminism feminism was basically a mistake. So what mm -hmm. is your problem with feminism? Let's start there. That's a good point. Right? Um, I think that feminism wants equality when it benefits us and not actual equality. Feminism, and that's are you going back to the beginning of feminism, like the whole history of feminism, like women's suffrage and everything. Yeah, no, I don't. You don't with women's suffrage? No. You don't think women should get the right to vote? No, no, I don't. Okay, so are grifting? you... Yeah, it's, it's obvious grifting. I, I feel like I get a little bit more offended when people are grifting so transparently that they can't keep themselves from smiling because they're aware of the audacity of their statements. Um, this is one of the reasons why I think that um, infrared is like three tiers above Jackson Hinkle. Because Jackson Hinkle... I, so first of all, infrared is smart. Um, I think he's insane, but I think he's a smart guy, whereas Jackson is is stupid. Um, but additionally, Infrared can weave together these, these beautiful patchwork cloths of insane esoteric fascism in ways that are genuinely entertaining to listen to that convey, if nothing else, a commitment to the bit. And he's a funny guy, right? But with Jackson, like, it's all this, it's just like, just parroting whatever he heard last, and he'll like laugh as he says it, because he knows he's just saying whatever. It's so, it's a lot, it's a lot more boring. But this girl has 1.4 million subs, you know? It's, it's, it like, this works with people. And her target audience, the young boys who are desperately afraid of women, um, probably can't recognize signs like this. I would be willing to bet a lot of the people who watch her also kind of hate her. 
Um, because that's kind of like the market she appeals to, right? She's not like Lauren Southern, where Lauren Southern tried to do this like, I am like the ultimate Aryan trad wife, and I am like a little glimpse of the world that we will build, my, 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 my Volk in, in our father band or whatever. Uh, she doesn't really do that. She just kind of sits here and debases herself. So I feel like she probably invites a lot of hatred from the community. Why does she look like Botox incarnate? Listen, okay, I've been blessed with naturally uh, nice, uh, smooth skin, and it helps that I moisturize my face like five times a day. But when I'm, when I'm ready, I'm probably going to Botox that shit up too. Serious or are you kidding? No, I'm serious. Okay, so women shouldn't get, they shouldn't have the right to vote. Yeah. Why? No. Um, because men are signed up for selective service, so they're fined three hundred thousand um, dollars if they're not, if they don't sign up for selective service when they're eighteen. Do you think women um, should be so drafted think, into the army? <laughs> I think if we want the same rights, it comes with the same responsibilities. Do you think women should be drafted into the army? <laughs> no. Okay, so no, then there's point. a paradox. No, but that's there. my point. I'm saying like let's make it fair. You don't believe? So, well, listen, this is your perfect. So I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying that if we are going to vote, have the same cost, which is that. Men are put into selective service and women are not. And if I had to pick between the two, then I would give up the right to vote instead of sign up for tough titties, selective service. Get this bitch out to boot. We're going to we're going to have her be doing push ups in the rain till she throws up. Let's go, boys. It's time. Oora. Now I don't have to pretend that I'm against the uh, draft anymore now that I'm out of the drafting age range. Twenty nine, baby. Wait, what's the drafting age range? Selective. Service age range until 26th birthday. Okay, nice. Let's go. Wait, are liable for training and service until the age of 35. Drafting is an unacceptable uh, social system. Uh, it is not good. It is very bad, actually. Nobody be, should be subjected to forced uh, employment and, and, and defense by the state. Uh, 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 at least not for six more years. Okay, moving selective on. Selective service. Okay, so... Mm -hmm. You're saying mm -hmm. women should only get the right to vote if they sign up for selective service, but at the same time, you're saying women should not serve in the military. So mm -hmm. in your world, women are just going to be disenfranchised because they're not going to mm -hmm. be able to sign. You, they shouldn't serve in the military because they're not as good fighters. No, right? no, I'm saying if I'm saying for me personally, I would not want to sign up for selective service if I had okay. to pick. So, you, so think, I would give that up. you think women should be given the choice if they want to do selective service or not? Israel has a selective service for both men and women, and they're considered to have one of the most elite military. Um, uh, 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 you know, one, one of the most advanced, well-developed militaries in the world. Um, the God's honest truth is that if you're going to have a draft, there's no reason why you uh, shouldn't have women. You know what soldiers are doing 24-7? You realize most soldiers aren't spending their time like carrying 100-pound backpacks over the hills of Afghanistan, right? Most people who are uh, in the military are, are either A, in, in some like military base in an allied country abroad, or B, they're like juggling knives in front of a depot that will never see action for four years. They're all, they're like, the primary skill that you need as a soldier is how to not be like hazed by your fellow countrymen, okay? They're, they're all playing grab ass and digging holes. <laughs> Seriously. They're all in the goon squad. Exactly, exactly. Like, it's the idea, it's like, well, women are a little weaker. It's like, well, yeah, they are. Okay, fine. So kick the weak ones out, same as we do for the men, you know? How to jack off in a porta potty. See, that's the reason why we need women in the military. Women can actually masturbate without needing a porta potty. Uh, uh, and therefore, like, they're more efficient, you know? Like, normally, if you have a bunch of dudes in your platoon, your 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 troop leader has to be like, yeah, we need to bring over these porta potties so the goo <laughs> so we need we need to bring over this portable goon cave so the boys don't get feisty. But that's not really the case with 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 chicks, right? Because they don't bust nuts, uh, except for trans chicks. But they're banned from the military, so there you go. Wait, they could unbanned, reban trans women from the military because of the goon cave, and draft cis. W wait, hold on. Okay, um. <laughs> It's just doing goon math. On the gender neutral goon cave. So only trans men? Obviously trans men. I think if we're going to vote, we should have no choice like the men do. So women should be drafted mandatory into selective mm -hmm. service, you Based. believe? 
Based. Based. No. Based. <laughs> okay, but don't you see the not, there's, you there's an issue? There's a problem I said. Here. I said, no, I said, I said. In the Air Force, it's all just paperwork? Oh, I thought the Air Force was all about being a psychopath. I thought, I thought the Air Force was all about, like, meeting your friends by the water cooler and talking about how, like, you personally are the next evil Knievel. Um, and if you ever get in the, in the, cause there's for, for every one dude in a fighter jet, there's like 500 dudes pushing paperwork in the air force. So it's all of you guys, like, you know, like the, 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 the jet pilot goes, like walks by you and like tosses his hair and you're like, wow. And you all talk about how, when you get in the seat, you're going to do amazing shit. It's all like top gun. Yeah. Don't women squirt. Is that not nutting? Yeah. But if you have a pussy, you don't squirt every time you come. That's like. Well, maybe for some people, but that's like a selective condition thing. If feminists, like, if feminists want the right to vote, right, then it should come with the draft. It should come, I mean, it's let's not called go, the draft let's anymore. Go, it's called let's go, let's go, let's go. Personally, in Pearl's world, I do not want to be drafted. I do Tough not want shit. to be in selective service. Tough shit. So, I know, but I'm I asking you, like, it, in general, right? in terms of policy, mm -hmm. because obviously I think it's mm -hmm. safe to say women in general want the right to vote, right? Mm -hmm. And so... Mm -hmm. Then, by your logic, women need to be entered into selective service, mm -hmm. right? But you don't mm -hmm. think that should happen, or you think that's okay? Yeah, I'd rather not. Not you. Rather I mean, not. in general, the the women, because women right. want to vote. So, how do we resolve this right. issue? Do they get drafted like men? I mean, I think it's. I mean, I think it's unlikely that women will ever have the right to vote taken away. So, I guess moving forward, maybe net taxpayers potentially you could do, but. That's Sorry, a whole, that that's a whole that's, yeah, right. that's a whole nother conversation, but Wait, what no, I think mean? if we're going to, if we're going to vote, what? I think that we should have the same responsibility as the men and be enlisted in selective service. Okay. So, that's so, okay. So you're Based. saying Based. women should also have to sign up for selective service when they turn 18, like men. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm saying if you're going to be equal, make it equal. Okay. And, and for me, for me, <laughs> I don't want to do that. No, thank you. Keep me out of that. Tough shit. Okay. So you. Right. I understand that's your preference, but I'm just trying to understand like the policy mm -hmm. that in your red pill, we're doing the red pill. We're seeing the world as it is. No, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't assign that belief to like red pill. That's not really like a, a red pill belief. That's okay. just mine. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm just trying to make a point about. Mm -hmm. So, so do you think having women in the army would weaken our military? Yes. So then probably don't draft women into the army. Well, no, having draftees makes our military weaker. Guys, the Vietnam War was a huge mistake for like 50 reasons, and one of them was, it turns out that people who don't want to be there make bad soldiers. There were a lot of officers who got murked in the middle of the night because they had been like so abusive to a bunch of like, like, like wannabe college students. Uh, that they just literally like, like there, there were so, there are so many stories of, um, of that fragging, literally the term fragging, like, oh, your officers using the porta potty outside the base. Wh how'd that grenade get in there? Literally. Or like they get dragged out in the middle of the night, beaten, rolled down a hill and like sent over to Charlie. Like that, that shit happened a lot because it turns out like, Hey, you know, it's, it's people need to kind of want to be there a little bit. <laughs> in order to not be completely ineffectual soldiers. They also let people in with mental disability. Yeah, also, if you want to keep the quality of the military up, maybe don't draft? How far do you guys think I can run, okay? You shouldn't draft me. Please don't draft me. You shouldn't draft me. I'll drop everything. I'll shit myself. Go, get away from me. <laughs> the, f the, the draft recruitment guy comes to my house, and the moment I make eye contact with him, I forehead veins bulge as I try to drop the fattest shit in my pants possible. Draftees still have to pass basic training, lol. Well, back during the Vietnam War, basic training sometimes got skipped, and also sometimes basic training was a guy looking at you and going, I like the cut of your jib, son. Now take this rifle and go off the NAM. Uh, there, there was a lot of uh, shorting of the process. While wow, Vosh regarding fragging, the most reliable figure is 730 incidents from 69 to 71. Just three years and 730 officers were murdered by their own men in that specific way? Jesus. Yo, if you want a really bad example of what um, drafts can look like, uh, um, in the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, more... Uh, uh, more Soviet soldiers died to each other than they did to Afghan soldiers by an enormous amount. Let me see if I can get the exact numbers on that. The official numbers are that 15,000 Soviet soldiers died to the Afghan soldiers, which is not true. It's definitely more than that.
Okay, yeah, I lo guys, look at this. Seriously, please look at this, okay? Because there was a draft during the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, okay? Casualties and losses. 14,453 killed official figures. This is bullshit. The official figures we have are from the Soviet Union. There was very poor record keeping for these, uh, for these uh, draftees. No shot. 26,000 killed other sources, including 3,000 officers. Even from Soviet official records, more people died from other sources than from the actual fighting with the Mujahideen. And they lie about this number too, okay? This debate is two hours long, just FYI. F you're right. Yeah, but then take away the vote with it. But did you, you're not giving that, you, that doesn't seem very fair, you see what I'm saying? Because you say, well, you guys are weaker, you guys are going to weaken mm -hmm. our military. Mm-hmm. So we don't want you in the military. But because you're not in the military, you don't get the right to vote. It's a catch-22, you know what I mean? Other sources refers to people counting losses. Oh, oh, other sources refers to other people counting losses. Okay, hold on one second then. That number was wrong, guys. That was other sources saying how many would have died there. Where's the, um, where's the number that relates to, um, uh, to training accidents? I learned about this on the, um, lions led by donkeys. And I trust them. They wouldn't lie to me. By the time the Soviet Union withdrew from Afghanistan, over 50,000 documented casualties. Uh, where is the, um, Lefty Misinfo? No, because I looked this up after the pod. I'll find it. Mm -hmm. So what do we do about that? Well, I'll tell you what I think we should do. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I mean, it goes back to... I just think that you have to have some skin in the game. And so it's like, if we're voting for a commander-in-chief... Right. That's the person that decides if we go to war, or we don't go to war. And so it, it's easy to, you know, again, I think that if you're going to vote, you should have the same responsibility as the men and women don't want to do that. It's either we're equal or we're not equal. OK, well, just, really just to be equal, fair, if we're really if we're really equal, have the same responsibility. OK, but again, it's equality when it benefits us. Well, the idea that it was like women who decided to only draft men is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my entire life, by the way. Yeah, dude, it was women who made that decision. That's so true. That's definitely that that's definitely how that panned out. Your logic doesn't even make sense. I mean, you're talking about first of all, there hasn't even been a draft in the in the United States in 50 years, right? Mm -hmm. So if there was a draft, maybe we could have this conversation, but it just seems kind of silly. In 50 years there hasn't been a mandatory draft. It just hasn't happened. Mhm. Mm so Mm -hmm. it, so why is it a big deal, I guess, about the selective service? Because it's a, there's not going to be another draft. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's there's mm -hmm. enough people in the army. Uh, I don't think that there's going to be a draft. It's just not going to happen. And with I the way technology is going, we're going to have autonomous robot fighters before there's a draft. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So why does it matter? I just don't see the point with the selective service thing. I just think it's again like women want all the rights without the responsibility. What other ones? If you don't if you don't think if you don't think that there's going to be a draft, then equally do what the men do. Men sure. are making three hundred thousand well, dollars. They don't have the option. Selected. They don't even have the option right now. Right. So give them the option. Okay. You okay. Know, I'm just Let's give them the option. Equal. Make it equal. Let's. But not the, but, the option. It has to be mandatory. I know, if we're but make you it. saying like women want the right to vote, but they don't want to enter in selective service. But it's not an option. So how do you know what all women want? I don't know what all women want. So then why are you saying things that are generalized all women? I'm saying, no, I, okay. Because I'm looking at the policies that have been pushed. And I'm saying the policies are not, like, where, where are the feminists fighting for equality in this situation? Like when I think, it, Yeah, I mean, again, it's not that relevant, but also the no women in the army is a kind of an, a byproduct of um, patriarchy because mm -hmm. women are looked as that they'd weaken the military, as you pointed out. Mm -hmm. Is that possible that it's men driving that policy and not so much women? I didn't say women drove that policy. I said well, then they what? don't. Yeah, yes, she did. Women want all the rights without the responsibilities. Also, hold on. The draft only applies up to being 35 years old, but we let 36 year olds and on vote. Like, what? This is, it's stupid. It's, it's made up. Fake. Fake. Try to make it equal. It's only equal when it benefits us. Even if nobody's being actually drafted. Uh, I mean, 50 years isn't, you know, that long of. I mean, who's to say? You don't know, but okay. Mm, 50 years. I mean, the last man I'm just, draft I mean, was like during matter, the, uh, matter, Vietnam, wasn't it? Do you, do, you not, do you not think it should be equal? So you think that it shouldn't be? No, I think, it's, I think what you're saying is fair, but it's not, it's not making any sense. Like, okay, mm -hmm. sure, let's put women into, uh, into you know, selective service. Fine. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. I think it's fine. Okay. I think everyone should sign up for it. And there's other people, there's other ways that people can support the military other than being on the front line, right?
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. So, what other rights do women uh, uh want? You know what I mean. That are mm-hmm. are contradictory. Um. Okay. Women want the right to not be a mother, but men don't have the right to not be a father. What? So You're women, talk- women can have women can have a uh, which I know a very state. I'm in the UK, so I kind of I forget sometimes the US is different by state. But uh, like in the UK, abortion's free up to six months, but a man can't can't opt out of child support. So it's like, why does he have the right to not be a father, but women don't? Or why do women have the right? Uh, the age old financial abortion. Oh, by the way, notice how this completely contradicts her previous position of um of uh, wanting to keep the family together. So she's like super insistent that no matter what, like you can't get divorced, but also men should be able to opt out of paying child support, um, which these are these are completely mutually exclusive positions, except they both play to different male insecurities, one of which being I should get to own my woman forever. And the other which being if if if, you know, I don't want to be a father, I shouldn't have to be right to not be mothers, but men don't have the right to not be fathers. I don't think that's fair or equal. Sorry, just to go back for a sec. So feminists actually do, uh, uh, they are, they want the draft abolished. So their point is, let's not sign up for the service. Let's abolish the draft altogether. So they are falling, mm-hmm. they are fighting for equality. They mm-hmm. are against the draft. There should be mm-hmm. no draft. So men and women shouldn't be drafted. That is also equality, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, okay. So you're, so you're, Jesus Christ. Except, so you just, you accept the premise is wrong on that? Um, I don't. I mean, it's still not equal the way it is. But yeah, what they're no, saying. it's not equal, equal the way it is. Sure, and yeah, feminists yeah, are yeah, fighting for equality. Oh, okay, I've never heard him talk about that. But do you listen okay. to a lot of feminist uh, ideology? Do you read books? Do you listen to lectures? How do you listen to a lot of that stuff? So I talk to feminists all the time. Right. I haven't seen you talk to an actual scholar once. You just talk to kind of random women. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, that's fair to say. Right. Man, mm-hmm. she's. This is this is so when you really you bad. Feminist, you may just mean like random women off the street. Why no. did she come on here? Wait, like at, she's not even like if the point is grifting, she's not even remotely charismatic enough to like. Wh- like, what is the purpose of this? I told you it was awful, Vosh. Yeah, but like I thought it would be awful in the sense of like, you know, like she's dumb or whatever. Not like she's is she high. What's happening? Like yeah, that's a scholar. Say, that's say that's say they're feminists. Yeah, but it's it, but feminism. It doesn't is, count. It's like a. It's like a <laughs> it doesn't count. <laughs> well, you said you know what you said you know what feminists believe because you talked mm-hmm. to a lot of feminists. But I'm talking about like. No, I said I've never heard them bring it up. So. Do you have yeah. any interest in talking to feminist scholars who are more aware with like kind of what feminism? Yeah, actually, yeah. yeah. I think that would be good. Send them. Send them to the UK. But you're well. They're in the UK. Mm-hmm. No, I actually tried for some, but then they'll be like, "You're a hateful woman." Da 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 da. There's one. Okay. There's one that's I can't even remember. Some blonde chick out here. Can't remember her name, but yeah, she didn't want to come on. Mm. Blondes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying that was her. <laughs> that's what she looked like. I don't know her name. I forget. But like, I mean, my point is, is like when you just bring a random girl and they say, "Yeah, I'm a feminist," it's kind of like the Steven Crowder changed my mind. Versus, mm-hmm. like, actually talking to someone who's involved in, like, the scholastics, you know, the academia of what feminism means historically. Okay, I'm very sorry, but I could not abide being wrong. I could not abide being wrong. And I had to look up. Okay. Dedov, Shina, and the Committee of Soldiers' Mothers under Gorbachev. 13th citation. In August 1989, the general staff stated that 13,833 Soviet troops had died in Afghanistan from 1979 to 1989, citing A. Likovsky, blah, 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 blah. The Committee of Soldiers' Mothers estimated that 38,000 non-combat deaths had occurred in the Soviet army during the same period. For an example of democratic commentary highlighting the irony inherent in the fact that soldiers were more at risk in peacetime conditions at home than they had been in combat in Afghanistan. There. It was a committee of Soviet mothers, because if you were a soldier in the Soviet army and you died, uh, what they would do is they would entomb you in like a lead or a zinc casket and ship you home. So like, if you were like a mother to a, uh, to a recruit, who are like a conscript, you would one day just see a zinc coffin 
outside of your door because it had been dropped there by some dude in a truck and your kid was in there and there's no way to open it because it's not, there's no door. It is a welded shut box of zinc. So the Committee of Soviet Mothers estimates that far more conscripts died, like in non-combat, due to hazing, murdering officers, so on and so forth, uh, uh, than actually died in combat in Afghanistan. I knew I was right on this. Okay, there we go. The citation has been found. Huh. Why zinc? Uh, zinc is cheap. We make our pennies out of it. Sometimes the Soviets messed up and delivered coffins to the wrong house. Yeah, well, you know. It's not like, you know, it's probably not good. Here, see? Zinc coffins. You can see that at the seam they're welded shut. Oh, you can see the uh, 17 more Russian soldiers arrive home and... Wait, do they still do this? Wait, they still do this? This is still Russian practice? They send home zinc welded shut co Okay. I don't know why they do this. Oh my god. Okay. Alright. Well, that's weird. Okay. In modern day and previously. Mm -hmm. So the, the level of discourse you would have is, is obviously different. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, so feminists are in favor of uh, equality, though. So I don't know if that's interesting to you or not. Mm -hmm. You don't believe me. Um, I'll take your word. Why, why even come on? Uh, really, like literally, why even come on? I, like, it, 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 at least grift properly. Like, are you just, is she... Is she being handled? Is there a handler? I don't understand. You can trust me. I'm a man. <laughs> okay. Okay, so moving on. Uh, oh, yeah, we're talking about... Um... You know what? I've come up with an interpretation. I think that this is just uh, her soul being destroyed. No, seriously, think about it. Like, her entire grift is appealing to an audience of people who despise her. Her political arguments are centered around her own worthlessness. She downplays her own appearance as a way of, like placating to the so all the little like insecure misogynistic boys who watch her are going like ah at least she knows she's ugly like uh, yeah i feel yeah it's not a happy life we're talking about feminism so mm -hmm. what other so you're talking about divorce court sorry i know you were making a point so let's go back to that you were saying that women can decide to terminate a pregnancy therefore they can choose to be a mom but men mm -hmm. cannot decide that and they don't get the choice to be the dad to not be a dad. Right. So do you think that, like, do you do not think that the idea that the baby, obviously the reason for that, right, which we both know, is that because the baby is inside the woman's body. Mm hmm I don't think that matters. Yeah. So... You... I mean, personally, personally, I'm pro-life, so I don't believe in abortion at all. But again, it's the, it's the double standard. It's like... See? Dude, this is the grift, man. I'm pro-life, but... I will advocate for a policy that would massively increase the amount of abortions because I still have to appeal to the, like, um, th this, like, er, women have it easier, like, MGTOW logic. Women have a choice, but men do not have a choice. Sure. No, I see that there's a, there is a sense to that, which is unfair. Mm -hmm. Although there are a lot of single moms, as you pointed out. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that are on child support, you know. Not all, not all, but you know. Well, men have the choice in the sense that they can just wear a condom, right? If and they don't want to be a father. The, yeah, right. But women have the choice to go on birth control. Okay. Women but, have the but choice ultimately, to take Plan B. Women have the choice to get an abortion. Women have a have the choice to, you know, take the morning after pill. Women have the choice. You've like IUD. There's a million pills. Right, but those, uh, are, those yeah, right. Those will have to do with pregnancy. Right. But I'm saying, if and a women man also it, can require men to put on condoms or not put on condoms. You, I'm sorry. Say that again. Women can also require that the men that they sleep with wear condoms. Right, but if so it's inherent, if, it, if it's inherently mm -hmm. unfair to men, mm -hmm. the easy solution is just it kills every all this discussion is men just put on condoms when they have sex. Therefore, that. Well, you can also say women. To be fair, condoms do suck. With my argument now presented, you know, just I'm just putting that out there. Close your legs, like. <laughs> yeah, but so. you're the one saying that it's unfair for men. That's my point. You're saying men no, don't I'm have a choice. No, I'm saying women. I'm saying women have like ten choices. The men have. But that's just condom. biology. The yeah. men have the men have condom or no condom, men... which again is a choice that both of them make. The okay. guy could just not. F what What if the guy just doesn't? F huh? That's an option. Just jerk off. The women can require that the men wear condoms too. 
Right. But you're only putting that but on the it's mat. In the men- I'm, I'm just saying, saying, saying okay, I'm saying once, you- once the once the baby is conceived, yeah, right? Yeah. Then the man has no choice, where the woman has a choice. Okay, so let's just talk about that then, because um, I hate abortion discussions so, your so much. That I hate a woman. It. Is oh, pregnant. it's a huge chunk. No, no, guys, this is already such a long debate, and this is the topic I care least about in the world. Well, I care about it, but I, I can't. I don't care about listening to it. Okay. The next section is women lose value with age. This is way more interesting. This is so much more interesting to listen to. Okay, yeah, I'm yeah, okay. I'm I'm moving to this. All right, I'm just going to give the win to Ethan on the abortion subject because she's retarded and he's not. So, you know, yeah. Before we get into that, mm-hmm. what is your message? Who are you speaking to and what is it you're hoping that they take from this? Mm-hmm. I mean, I just believe in speaking about things that are true. Um, and I, I think a lot of times as women, we're told that we can just wait forever, get married at 35 and have a bunch of kids. And that's just not true. Who's saying that? Um, I just think it's the message. Women do not get told. Every woman I have ever known has moms and sisters and aunts who are telling her when she's like 20, when are you going to settle down with a nice guy? When are you going to settle down with a nice guy? Come on, you know? Like, I, I, do, I do not. I think the pressure is coming in the opposite direction, as a matter of fact message that's pushed by the media and culture today um so the media is telling women to uh, get married at 35 i mean what have you ever seen like what's a, a homemaker that's on tv what do you mean like in a sitcom or you mean like in a no no, no but i'm saying like we don't have them in the media and the culture well, like family saying, really isn't homemakers? it's really family really isn't isn't because the average american can't afford to live on a single income what why would there be also skylar white but second of all um yeah, Marge Simpson. Third of all, what like the average person can't live in that arrangement. Pushed. Um, and so I, I'm not saying it to dog on women, but I just think a lot of times like we're lied to. I mean, we have now we have men are called ageist. Ageist? If they don't want younger women. You know, men, men are constantly mean. men what? are constantly shamed when they have a standard. Um what? wait, what? So <laughs> wait, wait, not... wait, 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 wait. Men are called ageist if they don't want younger... Did she mean older? She had to have misspoken on some level here. She's defended pedophilia on Twitter before, uh, so there's like an angle to that. It it has to be... Oh, I hit the button. She probably misspoke? Probably. Also, guys going after younger girls, the term there is an ageist. That's not the term people use. I mean, that's like a conversation from a, I don't know, a three hour episode. I don't remember the I've context. heard you bring it up a, a lot. I, I know that. Yeah, because it's, because it's true. So and a lot of so times speaking, it's women. You're speaking to women. You're saying mm-hmm. past 22, your value is mean, going down. And, yes, and your message. To, to men, your, men, to, and se- your, your value on the sexual marketplace. So your value. like that Pedo shit. Pedo shit. The idea that at 23. Listen, so the wall's not even at 30 anymore. Now the wall's at 22. Pedo shit. Pedo pedo shit i guess it works more for like because like most of her audience is like underage boys who hate women so to them it's like oh 22 year old yeah that's like ancient you know uh but yeah pedo shit yeah you hit 23 and it's over it's over maybe for white girls doesn't mean like your personal worth i'd like to just clarify that but yeah and so your message to them is mm-hmm. nothing you're just saying that because it's true i mean why i mean not just say the sun is hot? I mean, don't, don't wait till, you know, 35 to get married, get married as young as you can. Right. Get married Uh, as young as you can. Yeah. Now you seem to offer a lot of advice to who you're mostly giving advice to women. Would you say? I don't, I don't really, I wouldn't really. uh, Okay. I I wouldn't really, (sighs) I, I guess. Sure. Sure. Yeah. That's fair. I mean, I think I've heard you say that even. And then so. Men. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm like an advice channel. Like do this, do this, do this. I mean, it's more talking about the state of relationships today is a better way that I would put it. So as men get older, not like super mm-hmm. old, but their value goes up, and as a man's value on the sexual marketplace goes up, they're looking for younger <laughs> virgins, right? That's important. And so any woman who's not... Well, historically, virginity has always been a prerequisite for marriage. Like 100 years ago, 85% of women didn't admit to premarital sex. So, you know, it's more... Didn't admit to. Plenty of people were having premarital sex. Uh, Obviously, they wouldn't admit to it. If you go back far enough, if you admitted to it, uh, then you'd be, I don't know, clubbed together, clubbed by your local constable or something. Um, 
yeah, people were having premarital sex. Um, people actually have less sex now than they did before. All the evidence we have when it comes to like people having sex young is actually, it's, it's going in the other direction. People are having fewer friends, fewer sexual partners, having sex later, having sex less often, having fewer friends. The idea that it's going in the opposite direction is um, purely an optics and image thing. Right now we have TikTok and Instagram where we can see young people who look like they're slutting it up. In reality, people have always been slutting it up. We just haven't always had social media. And, it, and also in reality, a lot of people who claim to be slutting it up are in fact lying to you. It's, it's an aesthetic. Uh, you know, people, people have always been slutty. It turns out, you know, uh, sex actually does feel kind of good. So that, you know, that, that's, that's a motivator. Or abnormal now that women are not virgins anymore. Do you know what an appeal to a tradition is? What, just, what we did a hundred years saying, ago doesn't, doesn't uh, predict anything. Well, I'm saying the outcomes are better for women. Like the outcomes are obviously better. We have more women on antidepressants than ever before. And, you know, and, you know, it's tough because the, there are studies both ways. When, it, when We have a higher use of basically all psychiatric medicine than we used to because a lot of psychiatric medicine didn't exist in the past. So obviously, like, yeah, like we have more of every medical like technique and thing used now of all medicine when it comes to female happiness, but most of the ones that I've seen indicate that women are unhappy over a certain age without children. And most women wanted to have kids at some point in their life. Um, and I just think, and you know, you can see what happens in front of you. Like you're not blind. Women are happier with a family. Um, so then yeah. again, you're doing the, I'm not blind. I see, I see this, which is like, again, mm -hmm. kind of an emotional argument. Antidepressants didn't you exist. Just want to call me years emotional ago. today. That's just this is also a, another selection bias problem. People who have families are usually in better positions than people who don't. Having a family can make people happy, but there are people for whom having a family would not make them happy, and those people tend not to pursue families. So this whole, like, people with families are happier thing is a self-selection problem. Again, where you are looking at a group of people. It's like the whole um, people who are married tend to have higher incomes thing. And Sargon of Akkad was like, well, if people, if people married then maybe they'd make more money. And it's, well, no, people who make more money are more likely to get married because they're more financially secure. Your, your go-to today. Well, I'm trying, it's just, it's yeah. hard to have a conversation the with somebody who says- The sexism that I face, I the sexism I face in this country, I just get called emotional. Right. Well, it's hard to have a conversation with somebody who just says, I feel this, you know what I mean? It's like, how do you, how do you address that in a conversation? You say, I see this, I'm not blind. I mean, that's not really a concrete- Well, I, I, I listed, the, before I've that, listed Let's multiple talk about those. feelings. The antidepressants didn't exist a hundred years ago. What relevance does that have on the happiness of women then and now? I mean, I just we're seeing them get more and more on antidepressants. Well, men are on antidepressants I too. I think those well, yeah, are we're not talking. Way. We're not talking about men. But you if know, men, men and women are getting on like, antidepressants like, at the same rate, then it doesn't. Have... Why can't we have a, a conversation about women? without talking about the men because it doesn't it, seem, the it's like 90 percent. i can't i can't answer questions if you keep interrupting me when i'm trying to answer you go ahead you know? so it's like 90 percent of women are on contraceptive or have been on contraceptives at some point in their life one out of three women has one out of, out of four women have an std one out of three women has had an abortion um it's like these aren't good numbers like do you genuinely think that sleeping around is good for women i don't think in my opinion Matt yeah it feels good yeah yeah sure it's, it feels pretty good Ah, sleeping around like you're talking about like 100 plus partners isn't good for men or women okay, that's my do you opinion think sleeping wow slut shaming from ethan Cl wow 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 well, partners is good i think it's completely fine i don't think there's an issue with women do, having do you think it's partners. do you think no do you think it's good for them do you think it's good for i think women? it depends on the person in the relationships people. i mean the the premise is neutral the it's response to this is always freedom is good for people like we live in a free society people should be free to make choices not all those choices will be good for them, but making choices that are bad for you is part of the tapestry that allows you to grow as a person, rather than like just prescribing a life path for somebody from the beginning. Some people will only ever want to have sex with one person, some people won't, and you have to let those people find out. The premise doesn't imply, you know, people, men and women, have good and bad relationships. Some benefit them, some don't. Mm -hmm. Overall, multiple partners, you, you would say good for women or bad for women? I literally cannot average. answer that question because it makes no sense. It depends okay. on the it's relationship. It's like it's like asking like, "Hey, eating at three restaurants or just eating at one?" Like it doesn't. It's it's a meaningless question. It's like, well, what makes you happy? It it changes person to person. And she sleeps around, by the way. Again, all the like 
trad wife grifter type, like like one hundred percent. You know, um, she knows that. It's just like uh, the 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 young boys who are watching want to believe that controlling every aspect of women's life is for their betterment. The argument that women should be subservient trad wives because it's for their own good is materially no different from the old paternalistic argument that blacks um, are best kept as slaves because they're patronized by their white owners for their entire lives and kept in conditions better than that which they could create for themselves. It's bullshit. But white people coped hard and tried to convince themselves they were actually doing this for the benefit of the black people they owned. Obviously, they weren't. They just wanted free labor. But, you know. But let's mm -hmm. say this. I'll answer it. I'll say I think it's good to get more experiences in life and to have multiple partners. I think it's good. Yeah, I, I think it's not good. Why? So. Um, I, I think because it leads to more heartbreak. Heartbreak? What? Yeah, like w women sleeping with multiple people. I just don't, I don't think that's a good thing. You don't, I you don't can think, get heartbroken. With nice brings, argument. Yeah, but yeah, that's true. But I just don't think it's the same. Women attach through sex. You think sex. it's not the same. Men attach through sex too, by the way. Yeah, but we're not talking about men. I'm talking about women. But you, so. Um, like, I don't, they, I don't think, I don't think sleeping around is great for men either, but I don't think it's the same for men and for women. Hold on. You keep saying, um, let's talk and, about women. And, and I just want to say, and if there is a communal experience, then mm -hmm. it's it's worth bringing up, like you say, more women are antidepressants. But if men are on antidepressants in the same trajectory, then that would imply that it doesn't have to do with anything to do with women being promiscuous. It's more of a societal thing that affects both genders equally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Wait, say that one more time. I'm sorry. <laughs> if men and women are both uh... on antidepressants at the same rate then that, mm -hmm. would, that would suggest something on a larger societal issue and not because women are promiscuous. So I think that is worth well, bringing up. I mean, you could argue a lot of societal issues have come from women being promiscuous. Okay. So, I mean, you could, you could if 85% of women were virgins 100 years ago and everyone's an antidepressants, maybe so it doesn't... society perfect 100 maybe, years ago? Maybe, maybe Notice it, how she went from, these women wouldn't admit to premarital sex, and now she's jumped over to, they were virgins. Bro, like, the idea... the Oh, man, I just... It's really dumb. There's you have there's a lot of like historical and anthropological research on mating cultures and like virginity and sexuality in in like pre-modern society, like medieval Europe and, and going back further than that. And it's a really, really complicated subject. But the general like gist that I've learned in the little bits that I have read is that people were way, way sluttier than we think they were. Because think of who was writing the books back then that we use as citations for how people acted. Like, do you think the average, like, body, like, peasant in the 1400s was, like, describing all of the, you know, something that would have gotten them burned if, like, the local priest came by to look at it? No! This writing was being done by priests! Priests and noblemen! They weren't writing down the experiences of, uh, of, like, the average, um... Uh, uh, you know, like, medieval peasantry. But the little bits of knowledge that we do have, like, people were slutty as shit! People, oh, oh, the idea, like, do you go back to like tribal human society? Do you think tribal humanity was like monogamous? The concept of marriage wasn't discovered in a ditch, you know, like we came up with that. But even after we did, it's not like people just chose one partner for life. That's, that's it's psychotic. Yes, plenty of people were the village bicycle. Um, if you, if you want to return to tradition, listen, returning to tradition, okay, is getting railed by like six dudes in your tribe because they're all just finished making bricks out of clay and they need the sun to dry it. All right. That's, that's returning to tradition. Okay. I assume. It doesn't have good outcomes for women. Yeah. And then not writing it down. Well, society was perfect a hundred years ago when women were virgins. I, I didn't say perfect, but there was more intact families. Which the I life think expectancy perfect. was like 50 back then. Just so I, you know. I, I did not say, I don't know, what does that have to do with anything? Well, you're saying the quality of life, the, I mean, things were better back no, then? I said we, I no, that's, so. I said we had more intact families, which I think is important. Okay. That's not true, actually. Um, fam first of all, uh, men would leave all the time back in those days because they could just leave. In an era before, like, modern surveillance in the nation state, if you commit a crime or want to just leave your wife, you simply walk outside and then keep walking for a bit and congratulations there's no facebook there's no phones there's no database there's no social security number if you want to leave your family you can 
Also, families were not intact in many cases because the men would die. They would die in constant war. Um, banditry, highwaymen, disease, famine. Families were often torn apart through misery and strife, more so than anything. Uh, and if you wanted to leave, you just could, and many people did. And oh boy, was there a lot of folks. Oh, man. Uh, let's talk about the... Where were we? We were talking about... Uh, we were on the topic of uh, men wanting uh, younger women. Here, uh, did I finish this clip? I just learned a lot from them, so I'd love to hear this side. Oh, this is the pig up one, sorry. Men want younger women. We watched this whole clip. So, I, I was just trying to basically apply it to your life if I can. It's like, so older men for sure have Oscar. money, they have status, they're going to want a younger and um, more virgin woman. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a bit of a question, and I, I'm being honest here. Is it possible for, and you look at men, right, in terms of like their viability. You look at men and say, he's a high value man, he's a medium value man, he's a low value man, right? I mean, we could say that. We can put men into those categories. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's say you're, you're in the dating uh, field, right? You're, you're looking for a partner. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, what do you mean? Oh, I mean, you're, you're single, essentially, I guess. And you're looking for a significant... Maybe, partner. maybe not. Okay. What? Okay. So um, if you're looking for men... If a man who was willing to settle, let's say what? you're not that old, but you're 26, and you say that anyone over mm -hmm. 25 is like uh, almost damaged goods or getting worse and worse. No, <laughs> it's less um, valuable. It's less valuable. You, correct. Yes, I yeah. would say I was m more valuable five years ago. Yes, in terms of the dating market. Yes. So, do you think that how can somebody who's older and not a virgin and less valuable, how can they get in a relationship with a man and not think they're a loser? Because if you're a low value woman, then mm -hmm. in a sense, you'd be judging the guy who's settled, quote unquote, settling for you because he mm -hmm. couldn't get a higher value woman. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, a guy that you would settle that's for a good would question. be a loser by your own, by your own uh, metrics. That's, that's pretty value. good, actually. What are, what, are, what are men supposed to do? 95% of women aren't virgins on their wedding days. You could be a multimillionaire and not get a virgin. How do you? But I, but, think but how do you, you I think that's fine, why you see more fine. men walking away from relationships. Um, no, no, no. How do you yeah. enter a relationship and not think that he's a loser because he's low value? I, I don't really know how to answer that question. But it's because it's a hole in her ideology, right? Um, the the idea of like so the the basic argument that she's making is that like any coupling that is not like a virgin eighteen year old with uh, an older high value male or whatever, like all of those are just like you know. But she can't answer. It kind of implicates her as well is interesting right because in a sense only a low value man and i'm sorry i'm only i'm only framing this in your worldview let's mm -hmm. say a medium value man mm -hmm. would 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 decide to settle on somebody like you who's a little bit older not as fertile not as fertile you are not mm -hmm. a virgin and also mm -hmm. i'll tell you something else you like being in the foreground which is not good for traditional marriages i mean True. he's looking for someone who wants to build a home you don't know how to cook yeah, i don't i don't i don't really? expect to be with like a high value guy, I think that's silly. Okay. Um, What's your like, like, <laughs> uh, and now she's shit talking whatever guy she's going to get with. Why would any guy get with her now? Because now it's like, oh, okay, so like I'm low value now. She can't even cook. When I think of high value, I think of like top five percent of men. So what value do you very... think you're, you'll be settling on in your own personal life? <sighs> what? What, uh, what value will yeah. I be settling on in my? Yeah. Personal what man do you think is reasonable for you to pursue? <laughs> I, I just kind of, I think that's a bit of a inappropriate, like, question. But. That's interesting, because you spend, like, all day talking about this stuff. I find that it's really interesting to to have mm -hmm. you and anal put this analysis to, into use. How, why is it well, inappropriate? Well, because the way, you're framing the, the way you're framing the question is a bit disingenuous. Oh. Um, I think I think most women, and, you know... How is it I, disingenuous? Um, yeah, I, just, I think it's a bit disingenuous. Why? Okay. Oh, my God! Mm -hmm. Why? Why is it disingenuous? Mm -hmm. So this I, I, is the, this is not uh, the, she cannot answer these questions without implicating either herself or her ideology. There's not actually a way. There's no way to thread this needle because the logic is in, is inherently contradictory. Um, so she has she has to not answer. 
or she can maybe like lead around and half answer a few times, but she can't actually get to the bottom of this because it, it, it won't settle it. It, it. It's not good for her. I'm analyzing your viability by your own metrics, which you do all day to other women and men. Why is that disingenuous? I don't. <sighs> okay. <laughs> like, I think it's fair to say, because you were talking to women about expectations and men about expectations based on their value. I think it's fair to say, okay, well, what's your value of man you're looking for based on your own, uh, based on your own. Uh, what's, what's my value to a guy that I'm no, looking for? No, 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 no. What value no, of like, man? I, I wish I, like, I don't know what you want me to say. Like, I wish I, I was a virgin. You know, I, sh I should no, have no, waited. No, 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 no. Like, no. I don't know what, like, I don't, I don't. You know, most guys don't expect that in 2023, unfortunately. Um, I think men adapt to the market, but I think to say that you should just sleep around um, is, is a bit silly. That's that not what I'm asking. I'm asking. Well, that you were saying that, like, that more partners is good. I think that's a bit silly. No, no. Um, okay, but I think hold on. I'm, talking say, like, Pearl. Uh, I'm talking about you. Your value by your own metrics is going to be not super high. So. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's less high than it was five years ago. But it's not even just the age thing. It's like you are, you are working, you're in the foreground, you don't know how to cook. These are not good things oh, for your scorecard. Hey, hey, I'm actually pretty, I'm pretty good now. I've gotten, you have a gotten a lot better. Okay, I've good. You're working better. towards it, but unfortunately, as I've you started, age, those I've things are going to bounce out. I'm, yeah, I mean, sometimes, sometimes like you start in a certain place in life, but all you can do is improve and get better. That's interesting. So, I agree. So what is the point of telling people that they're, Because a lot of times you know, we're like, li we're lied to. We're not even told what men want. Being told that men want younger women is like crazy, even though that's, that's not yeah, dude. Nobody says that. No, I've never heard anyone say that. The men tend to go after younger women. I'm learning that now, as a matter of fact. True, by the way. It's not. That's not true, by the way. Men don't want younger women. They want. Okay, who's hotter? A 50 year old is equally as hot as a 20 year old, just based on looks and nothing else. So, yeah, it could be. I mean, it could be. Mm hmm. Well, wait, well, like, obviously, that literally depends on the 50 and the 18. Year well, like, that's a stupid question to begin with, because there were ugly 18 year olds and there are hot actress. Fit. So this is stupid on so many levels. Um, guys, OK, l look, all right. I, I, I know that age gap discourse has reached an incredibly toxic point where, like, people on TikTok are arguing whether or not it's problematic for, like, 18 and three month year olds to be in a relationship with 18 and nine month year olds. And I'm not going to touch on any of that shit. OK, I'm almost 30. All right. I have my Tinder range set from like 22 to 40 or whatever, okay? If there's some chick who has, like, who just got her bachelor's degree in college, because that's what a 22-year-old is at, more or less, and she wants to get absolutely beaten the fuck out, like back walls just destroyed, I'm not going to look at that uh, DM and go, oh, well, it's actually problematic. The back walls of the, the, that should be, no, I don't care. I don't care. I think that if you specifically and actively go after younger people, it's usually reflective of immaturity or predatory um, intentions on your part. Um, usually because you're like, uh, you, you want somebody who's like in a weaker position in life, like socially less developed um, or economically less developed. And it means that it's easier for you to kind of like lead them around. Uh, I don't think that it's necessarily bad for there to be age gaps. Generally speaking, I think the average age gap between men and women for relationships is three years. Like, the man is on average three years older. That's, like, oh, what, like whatever. Three years, that's, that's, that's fine for two adults. Um, so I don't really see much of an issue with that. It's mostly, like, the predatory intention of specifically going after younger people. Now, if you're, like, 40 and you meet a 25-year-old girl who's actually, like, really sweet and nice and you two get along well, I'm not going to stand in the way of love or whatever. I'm not saying it's always bad, even if there's a large age gap, assuming both of you are adults, obviously. It's mostly the predatory intentions thing to me, and I think it's always something you should keep in mind, because if you leave, like, this stuff untracked, it can get pretty bad when it comes to, like, potential exploitation. The thing is, though, Man, if you're unironically arguing that, like, 23-year-old girls are over the wall, you are a pedophile. You are literally a pedophile. 23. There are people who are still rounding out puberty at 23. That is pedo shit. The idea, like, okay, I recently had the displeasure while in downtown of seeing a group of high schoolers, okay? They look taller, so I'm guessing they were junior or senior year, which means they would have been around 18. You're aware 18 year olds are literal babies, right? Okay? I didn't think that when I was 18. Now I do, all right? I'm a f adult. I'm a pays my own taxes, files the forms, goes down to the auto shop to have the, uh, the, the oil change, tires, brake pads, blah. I'm an adult, okay? The 18-year-olds are these gangly, pimply, wheezy little f They're like alien things, okay? The idea that that, that these things, these, these creatures 
are in any way, shape, or form more desirable as partners to a chick who's like in her mid-20s is insane. That is psycho shit. You are mentally ill. You are, you are, your brain is damaged beyond repair. You are broken. You're a broken person. Not to mention just like talking to people that young, man. Like, because, you know, because tell you, like, I've talked to like 23, 22, whatever, like just out of college. You know, I, I'll, I'll blow back balls out fine, but like, you know, even that age gap, like 29 to 22 or 23 or whatever, that's significant enough where sometimes I feel like I'm talking to them, but they're a little too goofy goober for my taste. You understand what I'm talking about? I feel like these people do not understand how to file for uh, tax deductions, okay? If I, if I handed these mother their, um, their forms, I feel like they would just look at me confused. Uh, there's a gap there. Look, I'm just saying, I, I'm not going to be one of those people who's like, uh, you know, you, you sicko, she's three days younger than you. Um, however, the ideology that Just Pearly thinks is pushing here is designed to appeal to, again, either young boys who don't mind hearing shit like women peak at 22 because 22 is 10 years older than them, or B, divorced, bitter, older men who are probably pedophiles. Like, how do you meet a guy that you respect because he's settling on you? Don't you see that there's a paradox here? I mean, if you respect men, you don't like. But you, but how can you? How are you going to settle for a low value man? Because like that, it's like, Pearl, dude, come on, a like low, a low value man. Pearl, a low value um, man. I, I think I think if you get married, you're lucky to get married. That's my opinion. Okay. So so, so I would I would he, feel I would feel very lucky. Um, if I was married, I would feel. Very so lucky you'll take anything. <laughs> no, I won't take anything. A bit silly. Your 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 standards are I didn't say. I didn't say <laughs> that's not what I said. But okay. You said I'll be happy if I get married. I don't. You know what I mean? I, yeah. Anybody who marries me any, would be great. I didn't. I didn't say to anyone. Hmm. How would you? So, I, where's your value as a woman? Would you say like on a scale of one to ten? I give myself like a five. A five? Yeah, that's fair. Mm -hmm. I think. I mean, based on your metric, I'm not saying one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So we're looking yeah, for. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think I'm a five. So. So you're saying that all men want... Okay, the ultimate defeater to this pedophile argument that is being expressed right now. The ultimate defeater. Easy, okay? It's that Rio Morales. Miles Morales' mom has to be at least in her mid-30s. Probably older. Effortlessly defeated. It's over. Defeated the entire red pill. She looks 20? No. People just for some reason think that 30-year-olds are old or whatever. <laughs> if you take good... If you... Dog... If you take good care of your skin, you could look great for a while, all right? Do, do, wear sunscreen, use facial moisturizer, you're gonna be okay. Also, don't be white. To uh, have sex with younger women. This is kind of interesting data, but are you aware that the MILF category is like the most popular? It was the number one most searched term in 2018, MILF. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, men like to have sex with older women. But why um, is it but... the most searched for? Yeah, it's they're looking for status. milfs, and when they watch uh, are, porn, you, are you saying are you saying porn is the same thing as marriage and relationships? You say men want that. She would one hundred percent use the popularity of the teen category as an argument in favor of men like younger women. Sex with young girls. Why then are younger, men when younger they're women? When you say young girls, that's a bit okay. Yeah. Twenty two. I mean, what do you want me to say? Okay, okay. young women, twenty two year olds. Mm -hmm. Why then are they going to Pornhub and looking up milfs if they just want to? If they prefer, and this is the most searched. Wouldn't they be searching for like teen or something? 2018, yeah. You know, I, men aren't that picky. You know what I mean? They'll, they'll no, no, no. It's not about picky. It's about <laughs> preference. They look for. Whoa! Know? I thought men were so picky that women begin to lose sexual value after 22. Now they're not picky. Whenever it turns out they like people who are a lot older than 22. Hmm. Curious. Almost like this is all made of bullshit. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so I have a question. Why do you think like the the number one like they swipe right on younger women. That's do you, do you think it's, you do you think it's do you think it's equal an 18 or 22 year old versus a 50 year old woman in I terms of looks? Now I'm asking, do you think it's equal? Are you equally attracted to the average 55 year old versus 22 year old? I would be more uh, equally uh, attracted to someone closer to my age where I am in life. I think. Okay. Yeah, I would. I would maybe say, like minus five years. Yeah, but younger typically. Typically. Not older. Well, it's I mean, interesting plus or minus five that. years. Younger. Plus yeah, or minus. Younger. Right. Plus or minus five okay. years. Okay, you said younger first, but... Well, I'm telling you, plus or minus. Okay, okay. There's no take-backsies? 
No take backs. No, just, you said younger. Uh, yeah, but so uh, why do you, how do you explain most women that? Want to date. Most women want to date five to seven years older. I think men go like five years younger. Five to seven years older. I haven't, I haven't heard that. I think on average, women's ideal partner age is like their age. Like there's a chart where it's like women's preferred partner age is basically their age and men's is just stays around like mid 20s or something like that. That's seven years older. That's made up. Is there any way to explain why MILF is the um, most searched category? Guys like to watch, you know, a hot mom have sex. Yeah. More than a young girl have sex, apparently. Are they the top porn stars? Because I thought those were younger women. I thought it was like the ones that, I mean, I don't actually watch that stuff, so I don't know. I but... don't know the stats, but I'm just telling you based on search that people are looking up MILF way more than teen and stuff like yeah. that. So that I mean, is interesting, okay. though. Do you, do, you, do you think it's better for a woman to get married at 35 than 22? I think it's neutral. I think it, it depends on a lot of things. It's another, this is another nonsense question. It's, it depends on the life circumstances. It's not better. It's like better for the person. Literally, it's, it's, yeah. I do think women who get married young have a higher rate of divorce. That's true. Yeah, it's like below the age of like 21 or 18 or something. I don't remember. So that kind of disproves your thesis, doesn't it? If younger women are getting divorced, I would say more, overall more. younger is better than older. But if overall. younger women are getting divorced more, and you're the youngest, the youngest, not younger. But we also wait to get married. The average age of first marriage in the UK is like thirty-one. Yeah, but our life expectancy is like double what it was, so th it's not really a fair. Right, but that comparison. doesn't change. That doesn't change biology. Like so, when it comes to children, yeah, forty-eight percent of those who marry before the age of eighteen are likely to divorce within ten years, compared to twenty-five percent for those who marry after the age of twenty-five. Another link says couples who get married at 20 are 50% more likely to divorce than couples who wait until they're 25, with 28 being the sweet spot. And like women are still the most fertile when they're younger. So, I mean, we can have a cultural shift, but that doesn't change your biology. Well, we have a scientific shift too. We have methods of, of making it easier for older, older women to have uh, babies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like the cultural shift is You're matching the scientific. IVF? You're talking IVF. about like, it's not just IVF. There's fertility treatments you can get. I've done it with my wife. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. it's less invasive. It's like taking hormones and stuff. And uh, so there, so the the I science. Can, I can pull up the numbers, but I'm the majority of IVF fails, especially over is, a certain age. I I can pull it up. Um, so, but so I think it's and it's expensive too. It's like the average IVF is like thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, most fertility so, treatments is not IVF. There's there's less invasive, less impactful, less expensive things that you can do that are really effective. Right. I mean, you can, but again, most people are living paycheck to paycheck. They can't afford a bunch of fertility treatments. Okay. Like, I think that's easy for you to do, right? You're in a great position. It should in life. be free. I Average, agree. But uh, no. Well, people can't afford to have kids if that's the case either. Kids are expensive. No, I don't. I don't think that you should pay for other people's decisions. You know, um, I think if you want to make that decision, you should pay for it. But I just think that's an easy thing for you to say when you're in like you're, I, I'm, you do you do such great numbers. I'm sure you do really well income wise thank you for saying that do you should we we don't pay we shouldn't pay for what other people do should we pay for prisoners or should we ex execute them all <laughs> those are my only options well we shouldn't pay it's for either pay for prison or execute them well, okay right that's extreme the two? <laughs> in a sense though i'm trying to make it like uh, uh somewhat like a because, that's a tough question well, prisoners cost on average like thirty thousand dollars a year the average prisoner yeah mm-hmm or even more now, probably like 40, more. I think it's like close 000? to 70,000 or something like 70, that. 70,000? Let me look it up. I'll look it up. So That's we have the right crazy. Because the IVF is obviously way cheaper than that. Mm -hmm. So what do we do about them? Kids are expensive. To execute or put them in prison. Well, or well, what else? I mean, uh, what, 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 what would you do with prisoners? We're spending $45,000 um, a year. What do we do with them? Yeah, the average is, yeah, it looks like 45,000. 45,000? IVF like, probably costs like 10,000. The, I mean... Uh, what are they in prison for? I don't know much about um, it's kind of a different, you know, topic, but I do think we should execute. Well, they're rapists. all costing us the we same amount of money. Rapists, 45, we can execute and murderers. Yeah, we can. The rest, I, I don't really know. I don't have a strong opinion. Well, but IVF, in let's say, general, costs 10, general, but I guess, you know, I guess the prison would make a bit more sense because you want to save society. So that's something everybody benefits from. But I don't I don't benefit. If Susie down the streets waits waits till she's thirty five to get married, but then, then her, her family then. will be stronger. She's less likely to get divorced. The kids will. Has the whole thing been this stupid? Yes. Yeah, up in a stable could, household. I mean, or she could do that when she's younger. Like again, we're right, but that's not how it works. Her. And you know that. You look at the stats. Younger people are more likely to get divorced. Young people don't make as much money. What younger do you people mean have by, less what time do you mean to spend. By, 
what do you what do you mean by young so like well, they, I, I think the stat i saw was under the age of 21 but it's like between above that the divorce rate's very similar do you think women under 21 should get married um yeah if they want to mm. i think you know people i'm not forcing anyone to do anything but i think <coughs> more time Excuse you can me. spend with a husband rather than just like out on the dating market i think that's better i think last experience is better uh so here is an interesting uh, analysis regarding men wanting to sleep with uh, younger women. The top. So I, I, the obsession with virginal women is that many insecure misogynistic men are petrified of having sex with a woman who's had sex with a man who does it better. You know, um, I think like you got to understand how insecure men are. All right, and just having had sex with both men and women, I feel like I have some degree of like expertise in this particular subject. Okay, if you're having sex with a woman and she's sucking your dick, all right. And then, and, and, and it was good, feels good, you know? And, uh, and she's like, oh, haha, uh, how'd I do? And then you're like, oh, pretty good. She's like, oh yeah, it's the best you've ever had. And I'm like, um, oh, it's really, really good. I mean, you know, it's pretty great. Like that's, uh, 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 you know, I, I feel like that's the end of the conversation right there because she's just kind of like, it's bouncing or whatever. But if you're with a guy or something, or if a girl's with a guy and the, the guy's her and afterwards she's like that was good and he's like oh was that the best you've ever had and she's like oh yeah it was great i feel like that guy's two seconds from shooting her if you're a chick and a guy just asks you if that was the best you've ever had okay you need to be reaching for your bedside drawer where you keep the gun okay because he's about to kill himself or you or both i don't know it's like if you're having sex with a chick i feel like you can just talk about other girls you've been with having bigger tits like i've never even thought about that like, if you grab their tits and say, oh my god, these are like almost the biggest I've ever had. Holy shit. Like, I think that's fine. Or at the very least, like, maybe they'll be mildly miffed or whatever. But if you talk about a guy's dick, like, they'll, they'll f kill you. Guys, like, guys cannot stand. They're so caught up in insecurity about being the best sexual partner that they would literally rather limit themselves to, like, it'd be weird. But, like, yeah, straight people in chat think that's weird. Uh, queer people have very different conversations during sex than you guys do, okay? Don't worry about it. But, like, guys would literally rather, like, limit themselves to f virgins than risk being unfavorably compared to anyone else. It's just, it's just wild. It's just completely wild. I've been trying to source that figure. By how old is Abella Danger? How old is she? Uh, how old is Ab Abba? She's 27. She's 27. That's pretty old in your world, isn't it? <laughs> Lana Rhodes, Riley Reed. Yeah, but that's not a MILF. Oh, no. I think, and, and us, for us, it's like uh, 18 Lana to Rhodes 28. Age. Lana, Rhodes is, Lana Rhodes is 26. 26, yeah. Yeah, it's but again, 18 the to most 20, surge, it's 18, but like, it's 18 to 28. Just because they're, okay, they're the most popular doesn't mean it's the most popular top, category. Says, also, they're 26 is over the hill, right? I got the top, the yeah. top categories I have is ebony, lesbian, I, threesome. I don't see any 22-year-old head large uh, mainstream porn stars. I mean, this is a quality conversation. 26, it's not that. Like, we say 18 and 28 is a woman's peak. Twenty. What is the woman's peak? Eight, between 18 and 28. Um, I mean, 28. it slowly declines after... After like 22 or 23, it slowly declines, but 18 to 28 is and when peak, it's peak. peak as in what? What does peak mean? Peak like looks wise. Okay, looks wise. Hmm. So I've been trying, you, this claim that men between ages 20 and 80 want to have sex with 22 year olds. I haven't been able to find any source for that. The only source I've been able to find is from this book. Can we book. put the prisoners to work? Say what? Can we put the prisoners to work? They yeah, already do. Help. Yeah, they That's do. Exactly they're based, do they're slaves already. They work for like 10 cents an hour. Yeah, but only to profit yeah, but... private corporations. By the way, it doesn't benefit you at all. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's not a good system. You seem very knowledgeable in the prison system. I'm not a. I wouldn't call myself a prison expert. Yeah, and that's no. fa that's fair. We don't need to. No. I, I don't expect you to be. So, in terms of sourcing, <coughs> this claim that old men want to have sex with, not old men, all men want to have sex with twenty two year olds uh, around that age. <coughs> the only source for that I could find. So they is, find they find that that the most attractive. The only source for that I could find was. A book called. Can you look up what's the? Okay, yeah. Uh, this the the way that these numbers are sourced is pretty. I pretty... think I think this is a bad conversation to have, primarily because, as far as I can tell, it does seem like guys will always find like mid twenties or something like attractive. Not necessarily the most attractive, but just attractive. You know, whether or not it's most varies or for a variety of reasons. Um, I just think like more like the question we should be asking is like why. 
right? Like, why is that? That doesn't just happen neutrally or whatever. Be poor, so it's not really that high quality of a of a oh. of a source. But I'll read you the the results. It does say that men twenty to fifty find twenty three year olds most attractive. But in the same study, it says, but women that men find most they're most interested in are women of their similar age. Ah. But they found the twenty three year olds the most attractive. But not the most. How did they? How did they? How did they source? How did they source interested in and desirable? By asking. I think it how did, means how did they? Did they? They just asked them. The, the, it, yeah, that yeah, that is don't... how. That is how you do that. Yes. There's not like a like a chemical you can read it in their brain to to get a number on that. You do have to ask them. Yes. Whole I'm study. Just didn't ask they... them. It wasn't even a, really a study. This was a book. And mm -hmm. I'm sorry if this isn't what you got your statistics from, but it was the closest thing that we could find to the stats that you were laying out. And it did, again, it has shown that 20 to 50 men, when asked mm -hmm. who they find the most attractive, the answers generally fall in that range 20 to 23. However, mm -hmm. this wasn't really a study. This was a book by the CEO of OkCupid, and mm -hmm. he was basing all of this off of analyzing the raw, dating, the raw data from OkCupid. And this was in mm -hmm. 2014, so it was about a decade ago. But, the, but they're most mm -hmm. interested... Right, and, and they found the same yeah. conclusion that Ethan just pointed out, that mm -hmm. though they may find younger women more attractive, who mm -hmm. they are interested in dating falls generally much closer to their own age. But mm -hmm. if you have a better source on that, I'd love to hear it. Cause Wouldn't I... you, I feel like you might get the same answers from a lot of women on this too. Like if you show some like mid-twenties like heartthrob college dudes or whatever, and then it's like, then you, there's guys your age. I think most women probably oh, like, oh, yeah, you know, like in a fantasy, like I'd have a romp with those guys. Yeah, 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 of course. But, you know, I want to be with someone my age. I feel like that's, I, I think that's a normal way to think. I, fe I feel like that's fine. I feel like that's normal. I'm sure that when I'm 50, I will still find girls who are 25 attractive. The question will be, can I stand to listen to them talk? Probably not. We look. even if you look at dating app data, like what? Because it all starts with That's looks what this for is. men. This is dating. But I'm saying it starts. It starts with looks for men. You're not going to get in the door unless you look a certain way. Yeah, so I mean, there's some, there's some older. There's some older women that sure, right? Um, that look good enough to get into the door, but it starts with swiping and that starts with looks. So if they find the 22 year olds the most attractive, that's what you need to get in the door first. It's not it's not to say that every woman over the age of 30 or 35 is like done for completely. But this is cap. That gatekeep for appearance affects men more than it does women. Even unattractive women on Tinder get nonstop uh, uh, right swipes. This this is the other way around. I thought I thought men were the ones who have this like ultra like preferential attractive thing towards young women or whatever. Men take what they can get on 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 dating apps. Women are the ones who gatekeep uh, by hyper selecting for like very specific guys. It's the op. This is the opposite of true. Um, it's going to be a lot harder. And I think it's dishonest to say it's going to be equally as easy to date when you're 35 versus 22. Yeah, I didn't say that. But you're saying men... Wait, dating is easier when you're older. Whoa, 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 whoa. Literally everyone that I've ever heard talk about dating as in like mid-20s versus mid-30s has said that mid-30s is way easier because you have yourself figured out, you normally have more stuff in your life secure, and you're not dealing as much with like the immediate like breakout race of a bunch of college something-somethings who are just looking to f as many people as possible, but aren't actually taking relationships seriously. I've heard that from a lot of people. I'm in the middle. I'm I'm almost thirty, so right. I'm I'm right in between those two points. But that is that is definitely what I've heard. It looks like people in chat are saying like middle of the road, right? Like it's opposite. Like sometimes it's easier thirty, sometimes it's harder. I've he I've heard easier, but you're saying men men tend to dating is easier hooking up is not easier no i'm talking dating but she's advocating for people to be monogamous anyway right so i'd be talking dating here hooking up like yeah sure you're in college you're doing coke off people's dicks whatever in general like younger women they're, but find that's, younger women more attractive but they're not who they're interested right, but it like starts, they're but interested. everything starts but men it starts with looks so you don't get into the door unless you look a certain way I think you, you're making you a big generalization you, about all men. Okay, do you disagree with that? You don't think it starts I think a lot of men have a lot of different preferences. And I think a lot of men's <laughs> consideration of what attractive has a huge uh, variance as well. Okay. So when you say good looks get you in the door, I mean, I mean attraction I, is pretty subjective, don't you think? I think that it starts with looks for men. And looks um, is pretty men, subjective, men, I would say? say. No, I would say it's not. I would say men tend to find the same things attractive. Beauty is objective. Based on That's what? An interesting take, okay. Based on what? 
Um, I would say dating app data. Um, Which ones? I don't know off the top of my head, Ethan. This one from OK Cupid mm -hmm. said men are most interested in men of their own age. Or sorry, women yeah, of their own age. It said, but it said women. They find women the most attractive at twenty two. 23, 23 yeah, right? But, but yeah. But they don't want to date, date you, them, though. My, they don't want to date argument, them. Yeah, they find them more attractive. Can, can yeah. I, you guys don't let me finish. Um, is my, my argument is you need looks to get in the door. Mm -hmm. So, like, what does that have to do with being 22? Find out the most attractive. You, men tend to find younger women more attractive. I think you have a really. I think, and I think it's like dishonest to say, do you really think it's equally as easy to date for a woman at 35 versus 22? Again, nobody said that. Yeah, okay. No. Okay, do you think it's harder for the 35-year-old in general? I think there's Go less on. options as you get older. I, I don't, I genuinely don't know. I think that if you're 35, you probably have a better likelihood of finding a serious, mutually considerate relationship. And at, at 22, you're more likely to f people in the bathrooms at parties. I, I like, it's, there are different stages in life. Yeah, of course. I, okay. I think for okay. men, too. For men, too. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for, all, for, for both yeah, but do you Do you think it's equal? Do you think men have less options equally as much as women? As they get older? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, who f knows? No, like, <laughs> no, I'm asking your opinion. You're asking my opinion? My if, opinion if is women, that it's probably similar. Women, probably similar. If women... Yeah, see, I disagree. Because I even... Based I saw a different what? dating app that the most... No, I saw a different... I think it was either OkCupid or Plenty of Fish. I can't remember which one. But it was like the most swiped right on age for women was 18 and the most swiped right on age well, for men Well, that's just was, volume, dude. I mean, there's way more younger 50. people on, on dating apps than yeah, older for sure. people. Like, if By you look at age distribution, well, I mean, it'd be the vast majority of younger yeah, people. Well, yeah, well, and, and when they asked men what age they preferred to date, I, I think it was like five to seven like five years younger was the average in women it was five to seven years older so even if we just go off of women's preferences like men would have more options when they get older because women want older men that's all just you're just saying stuff i mean you're just saying stuff based on what you think is real but i don't think any mm -hmm. of that is necessarily true i mean i could again i could find it i mean i don't have like a team like you guys have I, yeah but no, well you no, say this but... stuff all the time on your show so i would expect you to be somewhat familiar with the I mean, I, I, it just depends on, like, sometimes you, you forget which one. Sure. You, know. you want to name a couple it could be from? Give me a second. I'll find it. God damn it. She takes mm. forever to find shit. Did you know that the number one five porn star of all time is uh, uh, Lisa Ann? She's 51 years old. Mm -hmm. Brandy Love is, is number eight. She's 50. <sighs> men want to, they like MILFs, man. Men like MILFs. They like experienced women that know what they're doing. They they like men like do, that. Do you think, do you think that men want that for relationships? Do you think men want to date a a child for relationships because they're more I think attractive? Men prefer, I think men prefer younger women in general in relationships. Yes. That's just I'm sorry, but fa but that does, that's not even backed up by your own data. Because men are more younger, younger than them typically. Younger than them. That's that's a different. That's not men want to date 22 year olds. <laughs> I wish I wish there would be more of a discussion here on like why these preferences exist. Like why is there a difference when it comes to like the fetishization of youth and stuff? Beauty standards aren't objective. They've shifted between cultures and between time periods a ton. We know that for a fact, it's not arguable. So like what has led to a situation where, you know, uh, uh, like one of the most popular porn categories, like teen category and guys are like hyper fixated on super young women or whatever, even though like, I, I don't know. I think that even if you look at like 18 year olds or whatever, they're like gangly freaks compared to at least at the very least women in their mid twenties. Like what, like why, right? What is that? Why is that? And I think a lot of that is because people like just pearly things. And it's like an innately self-destructive process for, uh, too. But this difference between who you're attracted to and who you're interested in is like a pretty meaningful one, you know? Because it, cause depending on how you fudge the numbers on that or how exactly you phrase that data, things look very, very different. A 50-year-old doesn't... They're the, most, they're the most attracted to 22-year-olds and looks gets you in the door. Yeah, but it doesn't just get you in the door. That's just step just, one. You're saying different things. In this culture, if a man is walking around with a 22-year-old, people the, are going to think that's weird. Two, people think two it's out weird. Of the five, it says two out of the five top porn star, porn. Oh, see, look. This is her data right here, okay? So, wow, look, red pill confirmed. A man's age versus the age of the women who look best to him. So the, the black line is the man's age from 20 to 50. And then which women look best to him? Well, pretty much always women in their early 20s, right here. Like, that's right here. So, oh, wow. 
And then here's the women's age versus the age of men who look the best to her. Oh, wow, see? Right here, women fall. Though interestingly, as the woman gets older, they also start to trend younger with who they're more attracted to. Oh, what could it mean? But then... Here are the age range of women men say they're most interested in. That's the gray bar right here. And it's like, oh, that's interesting. Guys are setting age ranges that don't even include the ages of the women they find most attractive. And if you go by the women men message the most, oh, well, now we're catching up by quite a bit. So the, the women men make contact with the most, while still younger on average, are more within like the five to ten years younger than everyone being in their uh, early 20s. And then hardly any men in their 30s message 20-year-old women. Whoa! Contacts from a random sample of 10,000 men. And then the older you get, wow, look at that, past 30, far fewer of them contact a 20-year-old woman. So it looks like in the abstract, if we're talking about like looking at an image of a woman, a picture, a video, a porn film, whatever, guys will be like, oh, I love these young 20-somethings. But when you look at real life, how people actually date, actually marry, actually spend time together, men do have a preference for women that are a bit younger than them. But overall, for the most part, they keep in trend pretty well. That's why the average age gap is like three years or something. USA average age gap. About 2.3 years, not even three years, 2.3 years. So this is, yeah, this is literally like a fantasy versus real life thing. And I'll attest to that, okay? Right now, I find 25-year-old women attractive. Um, uh, when I'm 50, I'm sure I will too. When I'm 50 years old, I'll probably look at porn that has 50, like 25-year-old women in it, and I'll be like, ah, she's hot, or whatever. But that doesn't mean I would want to, like, date and live with a 25-year-old. This is a very clear divide between people's abstract, oh, who looks the most like a model preference, and real life, who would I rather spend time with preference. And by the way, it's the same for women, okay? Women look at porn too, and I guarantee you that the guys that they're looking at, or if they look at gay porn, which a lot of women do, you know, a lot of them are going to be like mid-20-somethings. It's, yeah, it's the heart-dick divide. And this is a fine, normal thing, as long as you don't turn it into some kind of political cult where you obsess over, like, a highly regimented hierarchical society where women and men are ranked and ordered and numbered in accordance with their attractiveness and everyone must meet and monogamously breed. Like, come on. Porn stars in Pornhub are 23 and, and under. And all of the people that you're listing started young. So I just feel pretty depressed thinking about relationships. No, stop. That's the whole point. People like just pearly things are the ones making this discourse worse by conflating abstract pornography, dating app based preferences with like the actual experiences that people have dating. This is the blur that's making things worse. She is a she is aggravating the enemy. This is being made more inhuman. They're old now. Yeah, popular. they got the, they got the, they built their fan base. I don't think it really works that way. But they're old. They shouldn't be. They I shouldn't think, be I high. I don't think old, it works right? that way. You guys are in media. You know damn well that you build a fan base. Bro, over what do you time. think? They're YouTubers. They're not doing on. Minecraft Let's <laughs> yeah. Play. They're they're naked. Come on. Come on. Come on. Also, the uh, age appeal of a porn star has nothing to do with their actual age. There are thirty-year-old porn stars who play just legal eighteen-year-old teens, and there are porn stars that are like twenty-eight that play milfs. Um, it's li like, it's literally, they're, they're, they're actresses. It's porn. I, d I don't find that, an that analysis very interesting. And apparently you don't either because me at everything just pearly thing says. Sweetie Fox 22. Okay. We're just, we're literally just meandering at this point. I'm moving to the next section. Pearl Davis's weird take on slavery. Really? Sir, who talks about the history of slavery. So yeah, literally, oh, so, Mary. Yeah. Oh, so, but do you? So, do you agree with that premise that slavery was embellished, or no? Um, I think that there are parts that are un under embellished, and there are parts that are over embellished. I think it just depends That's what we're so talking. So interesting. About. I've got to know what was over embellished about slavery. <sighs> just like one example, I'm dying to know. Hmm. 
Yeah, I just, I just rather, I mean, I was talking about a book that I read, and I think to understand the context, you'd have to read the book. But you uh, just uh -huh. said some parts were embellished, some parts were under embellished. Yeah, I, I just think. Are I'm, you retracting that? I just, I, I'd really just rather not. <laughs> Okay. Dude. Dude, no, but slavery being embellished, that's so interesting. I there, don't know how you embellish there it. Certain, there are certain facts that we're not allowed to talk about. Like what? I would love to. We're, we're doing the oh, taboo. No, we're no, we're no, mixing no. it up. I it's just, red pill, baby. Let's it. see there, the world there, as it is. Taboo topics. I, I just, I genuinely want to know how it was embellished. We. Yeah, yeah. What can't we talk about? Come on. I mean, I could show you the video I was quoting, but it's just, I'd rather not. Watch get, this 58 minute this, video so. on the death of the West. Sounds like a blue pill of attitude to me. That's true. Yeah. Um, I just, again, I was kind of hoping this was like a good faith interview. Wait, what's bad being, faith? I'm literally showing you clips. Being asked about her positions is bad faith? Oh my God. <laughs> of you saying stuff. Yeah, I just, I'm, yeah. Wait, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What about this interview has been bad faith? I just think you're kind of trying to push an agenda and you're not. Yeah, I just think you're trying but to. That, push that's a clip that, of you I, saying that. You can disavow it. That'd I, be I super easy to say I was wrong. Interview where I'm quoting somebody. Like if you watch the full interview, I am quoting somebody, and now you're trying to pin me down about a topic that I don't dive into. Hold on. So it's like, hold on, hold on, <laughs> like that's hold on, not hold on, the point on. of my channel. Okay, like, so the point of my channel isn't. I like, know, I'm but quoting. you said it. How is that bad faith? Hold on, let okay, me see. Because I was talking about how the founder of the guy the. <laughs> Thomas Sowell talks about huh? how the guy that made Roots. Tom, Thomas Sowell, very known, excellent, high IQ uh, researcher in race relations. That's right. Talked about how it was a myth for his people to live by. Okay. That's what the guy who made Roots said, Alex Haley. Okay. So, and I can't even talk about that on a podcast without being canceled by the internet. Yeah, but mythology, uh, you know, you know, myth doesn't necessarily mean it's a lie, right? Just because he's mythology is like a culture, right, but a I'm history. That doesn't mean the way it's depicted in the movie was how it actually happened. And that's that's what he was talking about on the book. But again, so, I was quoting a book, and you're trying to like pin me down on quoting a book. Let me watch this again uh, and see if I'm doing that. Stuff too, because that's that's literally they they the founder of or the guy who made Roots What'd said I wanted say? a myth for my people to live by. Yeah. So they often, but that's what they uh, do. Is they embellish. Is that you said? Nick Fuentes. Hey, but here's what they do. And I'm not trying to say it wasn't horrible. I'm not trying to say it wasn't horrible. Right, but they want to make it like more horrible. But they want to make so it more horrible that they can control people. So that they can control people. Right, but Nick Fuentes minutes, agrees. But by wait, the way. wait! Oh my gosh! Five She's friends with uh, friends with Fuentes. That makes sense because they're both on. <laughs> Five minutes before I say, so will talks about this in his book. So I'm I'm communicating in the interview no. that I'm quoting an author. You're not being honest. Like, you say I they do this to okay so you disavow just disavow it then that's easy just say I don't think slavery was embellished I mean that's super easy that's like a layup considering that Nick Fuentes is a closeted trans woman um I feel like her brand of self hating misogyny is actually perfect together it listen okay uh Pearly Davis and Nick Fuentes are like if TTTT -T 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 defused okay you have the perfect blend of uh far right self hatred. Um, repression, staying in the closet. I, I feel, I don't know. I feel like it's, that's it. Like, and if you brought them back together, it'd be, there'd be synthesis. Do you agree? Yeah. Do you, you know what I mean? It's like, just say you don't there, think slavery I think, was embellished. I think, I think there are certain facts that you're not allowed to talk about. I don't really want to talk about it. Today. But that, that Roots was, what is a myth? I, I, again, there are certain facts you're not allowed to talk about. And I don't really feel like getting into it today. So. Thomas Sowell compared Barack Obama to Adolf Hitler. Do you it's, like it's, it's just it's just like the the pussy shit Nazis do every time, where it's like actually my inability to defend my positions is a product of the fact that Jews control us and won't let me say these things. It's the it's it's weak. It's weak. That analogy. <laughs> that's the author you're quoting. Hmm. Do you think that's a fair that's, analogy? That's a not? quite one sided way to write his whole work, but he wrote like a hundred books. Oh, I'm just asking you. Do you agree with that statement? Barack Obama <laughs> is comparable to Adolf Hitler. I, no. Okay. See, it's not hard. It's not hard. That's awesome. That's easy to do. You also said George Washington was viewed by, from his slaves like a father. I guess that's part of what the the mm -hmm. part of the what the myth I guess is that not all slave owners were evil some were father figures like george Washington. remember how i said earlier that what she does is a lot like how white slave owners would perpetuate the myth that blacks benefited from their slavery because they were patronized by the washington
Did you say that? What is wrong with her? <laughs> I don't remember. I think right. like if someone's a great and powerful man in history to the point like they're talking about him hundreds of years later, he didn't have any kids. But did, he, did he own slaves? What? Did he own slaves? <laughs> George Washington. Yeah, he did. Yeah, no romance to me. <laughs> I'm just saying. No, he actually, it's actually interesting. He, um, he had a different, like, he inherited his slaves, and it wasn't as simple as- I just as got a big chat. Holy shit, Nadir Zaveri, thank you so much for the 300. Once this is done, I'll read, uh, I'll read everything, including that. Thank you so much. God damn. It really, the, the, it's the soothing money really takes the pain away from the incredible agony of, uh, listening to just pearly things. <laughs> thank you so much. He could have just like let them go because um the debt that's incurred on them like you can't just release them and so he his slaves actually like he had a really good relationship with them and they considered him like a dad. Mm -hmm. What's your source for that? That was from a Thomas Sowell book. Thomas Sowell, so he's your guy. Thomas Sowell's the man. Mm -hmm. Thomas Sowell wrote a column about uh, supporting segregation in public schools. <laughs> George Washington. Okay. Uh, I don't, you want me to apologize? Like, you want me to talk about every single one of this man's opinions? No, your opinions. You said it. Um, oh, to be clear, by the way, because this is another one of those things where, like, uh, well, they, they don't want us to talk about this, okay? Um, uh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. First of all, yes, Washington was absolutely evil. Mount Vernon, a lot of people died and suffered there. Additionally, the one of the, like, one of these, like, uh, paternalistic white savior myths is like, oh, well, many of the slaves looked up to their owners. And the truth to that is, a lot of them did, and you have to understand that that is common to literally every system of abuse, slavery, and authoritarianism in human history. Every system, you want to go to the, from the pharaohs, the Fuhrer, the Japanese emperor, a military commanders who would beat and their uh, under like the idea like it's like ah well you know the the soldiers looked up to their commander as a father even as he would like terrorize them it doesn't it's it's a meaningless yeah you all look up to me even though i abuse you exactly um it, it's a completely meaningless statement and it's basically just a way of going like oh no no there was like a true fraternity between them and that's not true um it just it doesn't mean anything the emotional state of people who have suffered is not materially relevant to their suffering in all cases. Obviously. Otherwise, Stockholm Syndrome would mean actually it wasn't kidnapping or whatever. Like, we don't, we don't factor that in ethically because there are systems the human brain uses to cope with suffering up to and including, like, sympathy for those who are abusing you. It, yeah, it's it, it, Stockholm Syndrome, but there's a lot of other stuff, too. It's, it's just it's a complicated network of psychological problems that humans have developed because our brains are feeble and soft. No, I just want yeah, you. I, I just want to know what you think. <laughs> Do you think racism was embellished? I mean, it's so easy. I mean, just say no. I, I think. I, okay, there was a time well, where think. I started to read accounts from actual <laughs> slaves. So these okay. were like in like the and you know I can't really talk about this. Like even if I talk about this now, they're gonna clip it. They're gonna say things I didn't. I didn't say. Wait, but wait, it's wait. Like, when have when have I ever let this stop me? I have. I have fallen upon the sword 500,000 times, making any argument I want. You f weakling. Jesus Christ. I, I used to read actual slave accounts, and I was surprised how many didn't say bad things about their owners after they were free. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say, like, slavery was a horrible institution. Also worth noting that slaves capable of writing memoirs were more likely to be house slaves, therefore the slaves held in higher regard, therefore the Oh, not you. You're better than them. You can work with us in the house because you're not openly um, antagonistic towards us, and so on and so on. Also, obviously, like, she's um, lying or saw selective accounts. Overall, the record we have of former slaves who became literate after their slavery is that um, they wish they could have killed their slave owners sooner. Like, it's not, like, this is, this is not, like, an up-in-the-air historical question. Oh my god! That is a very, oh my, we're, hmm, gotta, gotta get ready to read some super chats after this one's done. Thank you. My goodness. But I can't talk about that fact without getting canceled. I can't say, hey, these slaves had a good relationship with their owners. Because it's getting not canceled. true. Because it's just not true. Isn't Washington known to have a bunch of his slaves? They basically all did. Not literally all, but like, yeah. So it's not true. What George well, Washington he, was not a father figure to his slaves. Well, if you Rick look up like um, I think it was Booker forty-seven. T. Uh, let's see, forty-seven of George Washington's slaves tried to escape. Would you try to escape if you? Okay, well, maybe your maybe that maybe that one was wrong. I, I don't I don't know. This was like oh, okay. a, a little bit on a podcast months ago. I don't really remember. But 
and, and I said I wasn't sure if it was Washington either in that interview at some point. But well, George, George like Washington whole, whole was I'm bringing up is I'm not even allowed to have this conversation without she or the, she's literally having this conversation. She's just bad at it and she's mad about it. You know, literally. You mean not allowing that? But I mean, we're giving you the. I mean, I right got now. I got months of backlash for this. I'm now like you, you guys are kind of trying to do a gotcha moment. No, no, no. I, I didn't know about the backlash. Like, you know, I I'm promise. not really. I didn't know about the backlash. I promise I didn't. I, got, I, had months I just want to know what you think. Like, I had I had months of people like, you know, it's like if, if I have this conversation, I had months of people calling my employees slaves. Like, that's what they call it. Like, that's that's, a, that's horrible. Call. Yeah, I disagree. Horrible. That sucks. Horrible. But, but at the same time, and, and like even even the guy and you know this because you watch the video of that guy, mm -hmm. the reaction you just showed, like you got your you're, you're acting oblivious. So I didn't know that. But you do know that because you know the reaction you just watched was my former co-host who insinuated that my my employees were being colonized. Oh, I'm so, I, I, I didn't like, know that. Yeah, I promise. So I, I just wanted to get your take. There. Well, people, so, people say uh, I just wanted to know what your thoughts are on this. That's all. Uh, um yeah I, i'm not like my channel isn't about slavery that's like a fringe i know. i'm just i want to yeah, know about so, you but i'm asking like why are you bringing this up when that's not really what my channel is about it's i can like, i can only ask out, you things about out. i i, I it, this is interesting. the reason this is so weird to me is because like so obviously she's a grifter we i as that's pretty much guaranteed as far as i'm concerned but also she's a disgusting person like you can be both it's not like you can sincerely be a bad person but also grift your way through a ton of beliefs like Milo Yiannopoulos is a great example of this. Um, but like, she is so bad and so cowardly at defending her bad positions that I don't understand what the benefit was of grifting them to begin with. Like, any far right person watching this is going to be looking at her and going, what the f***, Pearly? Like, why the f***, like, what do you, like, this, seriously? Like, you're going to look this weak? Which, which I guess leads me to have to conclude that, yeah, she's also retarded. So it, it it really is the trifecta then. She's authentically in deliberately a bad person and also a grifter, and she's also bad at it. God damn. It's the only thing that really makes sense. Interesting. Uh, I want to ask you about it. But do I can only ask you things in a confined you, you, space you about can, your time? You can, but you you understand how that looks to me. It's like you're just trying to pick out every well, single listen her ex her ex best friend exposing her as a grifter. Individual struggled with her weight. And instead of doing something about it, she blamed it on me. Hi, she's talking about me. <laughs> so Hannah and I were friends from 2002 pre-K until last year when I stopped being friends with her. I'll show you pics. So that was 2005. And this was in 2016 when we lived together. So in the beginning of her video, she's talking about our last conversation she looks like we a had a year ago in March where I confronted her about talking about women's bodies and their weight and all that cuckoo bird shit she talks about. And I was like, are you okay? Are you okay? And no, she defended it all. So I was like, okay, we're, we're done. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry, just kidding. And I still get videos of hers sent to me from people in high school I haven't talked to in forever being like, is this your friend? Do you, do you defend that? And I have to be like, no, cut her off a year ago. Um, and she even came to know my friend group here in Michigan when I was still in college and even tried to date two of them, didn't work out. So they'll send stuff to me and I I watch it because I, I just want to see what bullshit she has to say next. And I have a theory about this. Not that it's literally any excuse that she's doing this because what she is doing, I can't even put into words how disgusting it is, but I've known her since 2002. I do not think she thinks that way if she does her all over again i don't care but i don't think she does i think she does it to rev people up and to get more views and to get more money so all that to say i'm curious to see once she does find a husband and find a man is she gonna keep this act up because is, is she gonna find somebody that shares these exact views with her or is she gonna meet someone and be like okay i don't actually think this way anyway off top that last part of her video she says and now a year later, this girl is trying to get pregnant and she can't and weight affects fertility. Yeah, the, I feel like the most likely outcome is just she finds a guy, she has enough money and she just like drops off the face of the internet, right? Because she would never want to be with a man who's a fan of her. You know what I mean? Like Lauren Southern did the same thing, didn't she? Like drop off line when she finds a guy and it's like, oh yeah, okay, we're done doing a high tier like political disengagement because like in reality i don't actually want like a schizo nazi 
husband, like the kind of guys who liked me. You know, I actually want like a normal person. This was like a good money tour. Thank you. Um, yeah, something like that. I didn't know I was trying to get pregnant. I'm not. Now, when I last talked to her a year ago, that was my plan to get pregnant this year with my husband. So I don't know if she has seen my page from like her siblings accounts, because I don't follow her on anything and I'm private, but I still follow her siblings and sees that I'm not pregnant yet. So she's assuming that I'm too fat to get pregnant. And like, how rude, because we really supported each other, like going through a weight loss journey together. I've also seen some clips of her YouTube channel and she literally lies. She makes up stories or does not tell the truth about her family. So all this to say, she was lying about that whole story to get you revved up about her stupid ass point that she was trying to make. So don't believe her. All right. Yeah, that, 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 all, that all tracks pretty well, I think. That all fits. Now, I don't know if there's actually a point in continuing with this because every time, like, she... Not only is she not like being honest and defending her positions, she's not even defending her positions. I, I think it's about over though. I, I guess we're at the very end because it's about to move into a segment where she doesn't seem to be present. So yeah, let's finish this. Pearl, to be fair, to be totally fair, you could just say, I don't think slavery was embellished. Like you, you I mean, you, you were like, just that's talking super about easy. Recent, like... That's a layup for most people. <laughs> I was quoting a book. That's the crazy part. I was quoting. If you're confused on her defensiveness about the slavery stuff, her audience includes a lot of black men who are genuinely upset with the Fuentes collab. Oh my God, that makes sense because she is a huge overlap, uh, overlap with uh, Fresh and Fit. And as bad as the like black and Latino like misogyny grift circuit is on YouTube, they're not quite at the yes, I agree, we should have been slaves uh, level yet. So, oh man. So she actually grifted her way into the wrong. Ah! <laughs> That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Thank you. That actually makes a lot of sense. Um, okay. Yeah, and that's why she's being so f offensive. No wonder. That's so f funny. It literally like the turning back to my, my audience with my hand on a dial named racism and turning it and looking back to see how they react and realizing I've turned it a little too far. I look back at a sea of very, very, very misogynistic black men glaring at me. <laughs> listen, okay? You s listen. You cite Thomas Sowell to white people. Not to black people. Thomas Sowell hates black people. Do not say white people cite Thomas Sowell, okay? Putting a book. So, so do you it's agree like, with this, his statement, though? Um, do I think overall it was embellished? Some parts, sure. There it is. Which parts? Some parts. No, please tell me which parts. I think, tell me. I think that you can't... I think that certain slaves had good relationships with their owners. Not all, maybe not most, but I think some did. And that's that's not embellished. That's that's known. There were literally tens of millions of slaves. It's statistically impossible that that wouldn't be the case. Just um, that. and and there are accounts of there are accounts of them saying this. So some slaves had good relationships with their masters. Therefore, and slavery see, was see, embellished. Your, you know, you know how this is going to go. We've seen me. a movie like, about this. this. You, you know I can't have this conversation without them painting it a certain way. Well, just own it then. Just do it. Just say what you want. Yeah, you know what I mean? Just, right. just be red-pilled about it. <laughs> Who is they? I don't know who's they. Just your haters or someone? <sighs> the left. The left. Do they have parentheses around the they? We've seen like, this. I mean, we you know. even came in. Like, you researched, like, my family? Like, that's that's weird. How's that weird? It's all public. public it's stuff you talk like, the The idea... Okay. It's just really funny to me. The idea of, like... Um, some slaves had good relationships with their masters being some kind of like secret, like the Jews don't want you to say it thing when, um, uh, a, a, a movie was made where the main antagonist was that kind of slave. Literally like, like, oh yeah, dude, this is like the secret top secret info. And, like nobody's willing to acknowledge it. Meanwhile, um, <laughs> Tarantino just, just literally centers a blockbuster movie on that dynamic that everyone knows about now it's about you literally it talked about it it's called preparation which <laughs> no, you clearly done none of i didn't i didn't, I didn't <laughs> like you literally do no mom, preparation i didn't talk talked, about like, i didn't i didn't talk about if my mom was the president of like the <laughs> where do we find that find that on their I website i just looked it up i said i googled who yeah, are your parents a, and it popped right yeah. up well was sam jackson the main villain absolutely 100 percent, he was yes he was he was narratively framed as the main villain for sure he was yes and that's the point that's the point yeah is that, yeah, they're, famous. They're, they're, they're relatively famous. I didn't send a private investigator. interviews on YouTube. There's all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I didn't send a private investigator to your house. Yeah. I just did a little bit of research. Public information. Like, let me let me bring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Candy, the 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 um Leonardo uh, DiCaprio was just an idiot. He was just like a a dull blank 
like establishment canvas. He was just a a, a stupid, indignant, uh, uh, like just occupant for the existing system. Like he was just the concept of racism, you know. Whereas Samuel L. Jackson's character, the real evil in this case, was now people misinterpret this. The real evil narratively in Django was not oh, I guess actually the slaves were bad. No, of course not. That's idiotic. The real evil, the real harm, the thing that Stephen represents, that Samuel L. Jackson's character represents, is instead the complicity within the system, right? Like, Django was a slave, but what he did was he escaped, and then he fought back against it. He bought his freedom not with money, but with blood. And what Stephen did is accept a comfortable world of complacency within the system. He became a part of the mold. And that rot, that complicity, that's the thing that represents the ultimate antagonist. That's why Django's partner is a white man, um, Schultz. That's why like they're along together, because that's the contrast. You have a white man and a black man operating outside the system to retributively get justice for harms done versus a dull blank canvas for racism alongside the willful intelligent, because Stephen is smart, complicity within it. Stephen is far smarter than Candy is. That's established in the film. It's about your parents. To you, dude, well, you it's knew like, you were coming to talk to me for weeks. I've really done that. I, like, I, you're I know, welcome but I thought we were talking about the issues, not like my family. <laughs> We didn't talk about your family. Oh, family. I yeah, not, I mean, I, I mean, you were even implying earlier. First of all, it is relevant that your mom is the president when you're oh, talking you, about. You didn't, what, you didn't know any of the backlash I got. Well, who cares? You said it. Just own no, it. You I'm, asking, I'm asking. You didn't know any of the backlash I, didn't, I got. I didn't know about you it. No idea. Even though you got that from a video that my ex co host made about me. Um, so, I, right, right. See, like, this is dishonest. It's but, not but, honest. But, you, but, but what's the problem? You're getting backlash for, for something that no, you but, think. No, but I'm saying, you so you're, you're like. <laughs> You you're think not, that? You're not. You brought your parents up when you were talking about hiring people, didn't you? I I said, I just I think it's a bit. You talk about your parents all the time. Django you talk about is good. Your dad is rich. You did a tour of his whole barn with the bowling alley and recreational yeah. stuff in it. Like, why am I but, not allowed to I'm talk? I'm saying, about like, that? you 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 even just said. Oh that wait, her dad has a barn. Oh man, it's all coming together. The pieces falling into place. You knew. Like, because you got it from, you got that clip from an, like, we're not, okay, here, who to, cares? We're not here to protect your reputation. Yeah, I mean, who cares? Let's <laughs> say, care. I didn't know about it to the extent that it was such an issue for you, but let's just say it was. I mean, I do, I do, I do have to go though, because I have a show coming up, so. Okay, let's just end on this note. Mm -hmm. Slavery was embellished because some masters had good relationships with their masters. Some slaves <sighs> had good relationships with their masters. All right, all right. But don't you see how <laughs> easy it is to just say, I don't think it was embellished? Yeah, I don't is, think you it's guys, a secret. You guys act, you guys Wait, act just like other She's got a dentist like, appointment. Like, um... Wait, Pearl, I don't think it's a secret that <laughs> some masters had good relationships with their slaves. I don't think that's a secret. There's been a whole diversity. Okay, I really appreciate you it's having me It's been a documentary, on, um, Django um, Unchained, on it. Thank you. George, Thank you. okay, I, I appreciate you. Okay. Yeah, that's a dentist appointment right there. Yep, yep, that's a dentist appointment. Um, That was really funny. Okay. We're past stream end time. I gotta read donos. Okay, um, Ethan did a really good job there, literally. Like, a lot of that was just Pearl fumbling because she was so cowardly and unwilling to talk about issues because she's grifting and doesn't care and she's just saying whatever. She's just saying things in the words of Ethan. But also because I think Ethan did a really good job tonally of managing the conversation. What was he's like selling her rope to hang herself with, you know? Um, Get, don't don't like yell or, or 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 like talk her down or whatever. Be kind of patronizing and let her draw out these arguments. Man, she looked terrible there, like really bad. I think that Ethan could have looked even better, were it not for the fact that she looked so bad. Like it's kind it's kind of like how it's hard to demonstrate the proficiency of a swordmaster when they're fighting against a chicken. You know, it's it's like there there was the the battle. It was over before it began. You know. But uh, no, I think Ethan did a really good job there considering just the general <laughs> deficiency on display. That's why it seems like he did better against Ollie. Because Ollie did something, right? Pearl just seemed to like complain. Pearl, Pearl was just complaining about the indignity of having to like explain her positions. You know? It's, it's just, it's, it's, it's funny. Yeah. I guess, if nothing else, it's a nice reminder of the fact that everyone 
bad who, uh, you know, who disagrees with us is uh, also dumb and a liar. Some might say pearl clutching. Yeah, she can't even do it that well, too, because she keeps, like, titter laughing, you know? It seems like the comments agree, and I completely agree, yeah. I really don't think she has that much internalized misogyny, though. I think it's far, far more likely that this is just, like, a scattering of shit she's throwing at the wall and a desperate effort to, like, prop up some kind of, um, you know... Uh, persona or identity or get a lot of money or whatever else. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, if it genuinely is self-hatred, I just don't think that reads with a lot of stuff, personally. But, you know, I'm not magic. I can't read into people's minds. Either way, well done, Ethan. Seriously, well done.